ready for another lesson. What's up, everybody, and welcome back to Back Row Banter, your favorite casual movie talk podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Adam Schwartz, and on today's episode in the news, there's a, quite a lot to talk about, a wide variety of news, each of which I'm excited to get to. Uh, trailer talk this week, there's a new Avatar trailer, but do we really need to watch it? The answer is no. So there's no trailer talk this week. You can go watch a trailer on your own if you do so. Please. New streaming this week is the first week of the month, so of course it's a longer list. Some decent things coming. We'll get to the what we're watching, of course, and then our main review for the episode is Spirited Away. But before we get to any of that, he's got cash and cards. It's Nathaniel Gingrich. I have cash and cards for my food, please. He's got cash and cards. That's like the most dad thing to say ever. I love that line. Don't worry, sweetie. I've got cash and or I've got cards and cash. Like, yeah. what, you know, what could go wrong? Me, obviously, I always keep my wealth in my wristwatch as well, too. You know? Yes. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. Smart uh, man. I just buy multi-thousand dollar wish watches at any given time just to smuggle them across borders, really. Wise. That's very wise. Yeah. S- speaking of cash, fellas, qu- question of the day for you all. Do you all still try to carry a certain amount of cash just like on a day-to-day basis or like a no, week-to-week basis? I no. figured Adam wouldn't, and maybe it was just like an age thing, right? Because I feel like I'm almost there. So, like, for example, anytime I see, like, my parents, my dad always has some type of cash. Sure, sure. Yeah, I usually... At all times, you know? If I'm going sure. somewhere or doing anything, I always have cash on me. But if I'm, like, in my day-to-day life, generally not as much. But, yeah, I, I generally have a few bucks on me. Okay. Yeah. I, I hate cash, and I hate the concept of carrying cash. And so I don't. Um, I have the Apple Wallet, the MagSafe one, which has been life changing. Mm. Um, because now, like, I just I put it on. I'll take it off at night, put it on at the beginning of the day, and throughout the day, I, I there's just one less thing I have to grab anywhere I'm going. I got my phone, I got my keys. That's it. I I, I think you'd be surprised how much of a difference it makes in you know your day to day life when you have to grab two three things instead of three. You know, you just you don't have to worry about that that wallet or or where you're gonna put it. I mean, I'm sitting on my wallet all the time. What's that? Is it a Seinfeld joke that the what what is the thing you get when you sit on your wallet through all your whole life or something like that? Scoliosis. Yeah, there there you go. <laughs> I can't be getting that. I'm too young. So um, I got the Apple Wallet. You know. Hmm. Fair. Yeah. That's um, why. I, but I do have like small amounts of cash on hand if I need to go. Like if I am going out, mainly going out to the bars is like the only time I'll have cash. Fair enough, yeah. yeah. E- easiest, uh, easiest transaction. Yeah, they got yeah. twenty dollars call today. Well, there's yeah, there's always cover at the bars. Although, yeah. um, there's a club slash bar here in Columbia, um, that was open my freshman year called My House, and um, they, when COVID came, uh, closed down, and they ended up taking, uh, like two years, and they renovated the whole place, like totally redid it, um, and remodeled. And so they just opened up two weeks ago for the first time since my freshman year. Um, and it's awesome. And the, one of the best parts about it is they are completely cashless. The cover is on card. The bar is only card. And you can like mm-hmm. only tip and stuff. I mean, you can probably, you can tip with cash. That's why people tipping. For cash. sure. Yeah. Cash is king take whatever. Tips. Yes. Yeah. Um, but, but everything else is cashless, which I was very happy to hear. I actually yeah, don't, uh, I don't carry a wallet. I just carry cash in large wads around my body. So, yeah. You know, <laughs> ah, yeah. Just, oh, the old, uh, the old smuggler technique. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Crumpled up in shoes, um, you know, just free falling in my pockets. <laughs> a lot of times I take two halves of a dollar bill out and I, I tape them together. I keep a little roll of tape on my, on my belt as well, too. Makes sense. Um, mm-hmm. In my yeah. bra a lot of times as well. You know this is a public podcast. Like people are gonna know this now, and you're gonna get mugged, right? Try and pickpocket it. Yeah. Well, it's more well, than just pocket. That's, yeah, his, yeah, that's his whole. Yeah, that's his whole as body. Yeah. <laughs> that's. I'm just trying. I'm trying to lure them in to test out my self defense techniques. Ah, uh, okay. It was. A, it was a ruse. Yeah. What you All don't right. know, so, everyone, is I'm an undercover DEA agent. Oh no. <laughs> 
DA agent, DA agent by day, podcaster by night. It's um, Nathaniel Gingrich. It's honest work, but you know it is. Yeah. Somebody's got to do it. Right? Yeah. Do it. <laughs> also joining us today, it's trembling Ty, Tyler Vidalis. Hmm, I'm not much of a trembler. No. No. Are you a trembler? Yeah, as a kid? No. No. I wasn't even really like cold as a kid. Well, you don't have to be cold to tremble. You can be scared. Yeah, but I, I feel like that's, I mean, shivering is a kind of like trembling. It is, but it's shivering and there's two words for it for a reason. There, there's a difference. There used to I mean, be. I think it's the same action, but it's like the, the origin of the action. The cause. You know? Yeah. Sure, sure, sure. Still not much of a trembler. Okay. <laughs> we ended up back at the same spot, I guess. So. Can't be too mad. How you doing though, man? Good. Not bad. Finally uh, closed uh, Lake Zurich, so that is uh, one pile of shit off my plate, and uh, hey. I'm excited about it. There you go. To Ryan. be clear, yeah. we're not talking about the town of Lake Zurich. Just, no, yeah, I've, I've burned that whole thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Gone. Yeah, authorities have been is looking that, for. Is me. that a is that a Halloween ends reference? What, what, what did he uh, What do you tell Allison? <laughs> we're gonna burn it down. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the whole thing. One giant magnifying glass. We're going to set it up to the sun. <laughs> you don't need that. You just need to release a bunch of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, Nathaniel. It's going to work either way. No, I like my big magnifying glass idea. Okay. It's All not right. a bad idea. Yeah. We could get that. It's very, uh, it's, it's very like uh, 90s Nickelodeon villain-esque. Mm. Ah, yeah, yeah. It's, I'm going to uh, put it in my yeah, radioactivizer. Face and Ferb. I was gonna say that's a Phineas and Ferb fucking a, film. Yeah, right that's there, a for sure. the Doctor Doof and Schmertz. like uh, a, a a Pinky in the Brain. If you want to go back uh, a little bit further, no, do you know what Pinky in the Brain is, Adam? No chance. Oh man. my gosh! What are we going to do crazy. tonight? I've probably, probably heard of it. What is it? I'm sure if you've seen a, a screen cap or something, you would you would know what it is. Trying what are we going different. to do today, Brian? Same nah. thing. <laughs> Pinky in the brain. Yeah, in please Google that. I guarantee, you I guarantee you, you've seen that before. Yeah, Pinky, or you've seen some sort of clips. Gee, Bray, what are we going to do brain. tonight? Same thing we do every night, Pinky. Try oh, to take I over the seen. world. Yeah, I have. I have. I've seen that before. <laughs> For sure, that's funny. That's a classic. So good. And rounding out the squadron, of course, it's Big Bo Blake, Blake Holder. What's going on, fellas? What type of bow are we talking about here? Like a like an archery bow? Uh, a, no, a just ribbon B-O. bow. Oh, bow! Oh, bow, bow, bow. Oh, yeah. I thought we were going for like maybe like a bow, as like even like a bow tie. Yeah. No, so you, you no, said bow, and just I was the like, baby bow. I've never really known like Blake to be a smelly kid. <laughs> yeah. No, bow. Uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> when was the last oh, time no, Blake no, was? Yeah. When was the last time Blake was called a kid? <laughs> It's been a while. Just now. Ooh. Yeah. That's, yeah, pretty, that's, that's probably, the, probably the first time, and I don't, I don't know. It's probably got to go, I don't know, probably 10 plus years. Those are those yeah, uh, those weird landmarks where you reach, or like, the last time someone called you kid or something, or, like, uh, like the one they always talk about is, like, the last time your dad set you down from, like, the back of his shoulders and, like, for <laughs> yeah, the last yeah, time, and you didn't know. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I had one of those moments over the weekend. Where uh, what was well, it going back? What? Well, it was um, Papa Schwartz. Papa Schwartz put you on his shoulders again, just to give you a ride <laughs> around yeah, the yard. Yeah, just for time's sake, no. Uh, I, well, I was out uh, since it was Halloween weekend. I went back to the my house club, and we were. I was talking to my buddy who would we would go there freshman year, and it was like we never kind of we never knew we uh, it would be three years before we came back to this place. Uh, like one day we gotcha. just left it, and then it was uh, we never came back, and now we're back. That's like one of those really like sad like uh, things you read where it's like the last time you played night games with your friends you didn't know it was gonna be the last time yeah. you played night games. Yeah, yeah. And it's that's like, um, <laughs> that's like that's like the funny internet meme of like uh, it's like uh, it's like you and like your friends like playing like Xbox 360 right like Call of Duty or something mm-hmm. and it's like the message mm-hmm. like it's like it's like same time tomorrow and it's like yeah bro I'll be on and it's like last online 800 yeah. days ago or something <laughs> like that. Like, <laughs> That's what it feels like. A lot of people. Uh, anyone played in New Cod? Yeah. I oh, yeah, yes. You no, got I haven't. But I have played. I'm hearing all good it. news. I've played. All my friends are saying it's legit. 
Go ahead, at uh, Nathaniel. Oh, I was just saying I played like 15 minutes of it, but it was good. Yeah, I think I may. Uh, this may be the Call of Duty to break me down and, and jump back on board. I think the last one I bought was Modern Warfare, which is was that 2019. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So. I remember playing two games with you, Blake, and then I never saw you on that game again. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Same time yeah. tomorrow? Yeah, bro. Last time. <laughs> yeah, that, exactly. It was one of those. It was one of those. Blake's ready to get hurt again. He yeah. is. I think I, think I may jump back in, and I, I, I've seen the gameplay on YouTube and whatnot, and I think it's one of those that everyone's just kind of working off nostalgia. Um, yeah. It, it, the gameplay know. looks good from the shit I've seen on YouTube. I'm it, not going to lie. It does. It does. It's just the maps. I've heard the maps are not good. And, is it not the same um, maps from... Listen, mm-hmm. everything is forgiven because they added an F1 race map, so... They did. They did add an <laughs> F1 race map. Um, but, yeah, the... Um, they So, the game... This is going to be the only COD for two years. So, there's no COD in 2023. They're on the Blake um, schedule. So they've confirmed that by the end or by like next year or maybe it is next year. At some point, they are going to be remaking almost every single original Modern Warfare 2 map from like the original Modern Warfare 2 game. Ah, uh, okay. That's going to bring it. Yeah. Some shit. Yeah, basically. But I think they said it'll, it'll be free. I mean, it fucking better be oh, a game okay. $70. For like, sure. The hell yeah, is sure. that? Inflation, man. Yeah, I don't know. I haven't played yet just because it's just... I don't want to spend seventy dollars on a game. I don't know. I want to play beyond a week. Like I'd love to like try it out and play it, but like seventy dollars when I know in a week I'm just gonna to want to keep playing Halo or Overwatch Two. It's just like why do it now? It is hard yeah. to justify the price of games nowadays. Yeah, yeah sure. like and it's just when games are free to play, Halo and Overwatch both free to play. At least the multiplayer um, for yeah. Halo. It's just like when a game's not free to play, it it makes me want to play it or get it like way less because yeah. if i can just try out a game like i'm way more likely to get it and spend money on it because it was free whereas like with cod i'm excited for i hopefully that activision blizzard merger goes through because i'd love cod to come to game pass i yeah. think that'd be that'd be very good because um i wonder I if it's on playstation it. plus it's, i don't think I so. don't believe it is i don't think i saw that but yeah. um yeah i think if cod was free to play every year i would I think that's that's the better move move for them, yeah. and I hopefully if they hopefully they reevaluate their structure of how they do Call of Duty because I just I think it's a little outdated at this point. Yeah, the year to year thing for sure is tough. Yeah, the year to year thing is just I don't think people are in for it on anything but sports games at this point. Yeah, and even then I think people are getting burnt out on that. Sorry. For no, no, all good, all good. Go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna. I, that was it. That was it. I, you, um was just the sports game. I don't think, I think people are getting burnt out on buying the same game like that year over year. Yeah. yeah. So Nathaniel Ty, obviously you two have played it. I got a few other buddies who played it as well. What do you, what do you guys like? And is, I think the campaign is just the complete, it's just revamped. Like, I already beat the campaign. <laughs> is it revamped from like the OG no, model? No, it's a new story. Oh, so yeah. why am I, why did I think this was just a complete revamp of, um maybe just because of the game because there's already been a modern warfare 2 um and, but yeah, yeah they, it is a too. is it definitely a, it's a whole new game okay how's the how's the pvp online it's it's pretty good it it definitely gets you back to um just like how pubs used to be yep and uh you can still talk shit in all the lobbies which a lot of people <laughs> yeah. are, are like you know like that's like where like a lot of people like were born into cod and for sure. Um, For sure. You know, that's like the the toxicity of it. But, um, sure. but yeah, you know, I, I think overall um, gameplay is pretty good. Um, I think you see a lot of the market just kind of... It's, it's hard because Battle Royales have become such a, a big piece of, like, the, the gaming community and when you go back to just regular pubs and it's it's a bit of a change it's cool i like it but um yeah it's just i i was fortunate enough not to have to buy this game um it was uh purchased for me um ah. but uh if it was not i i find it hard to believe that uh i would uh i would have bought it yeah I'll purchase it okay. for you i need names I need um, for me it was uh it was joseph 
I don't know Joseph, but Joseph. Did you um, like to make a donation? You do know. He, was, he was your boss at one point. Yes, yes, he was. Ah, that's that Joseph. Uh, Correct. Okay. Well, Shout out, Joseph. Um, Tell him I'd love a, a very generous gift. <laughs> well, I did. Uh, I did a lot of extra stuff for him with like Lake Zurich and a bunch of other, other bullshit, and so. I bet, uh, he, I bet he just wanted to play with you, and was like. I, that was definitely part of it because I had I had expressed <laughs> that uh, I was not going to outright purchase it because I didn't think that there was that big of a difference. Like I just I didn't really care for it. It's just it's you know, and uh, so yeah, that was that was definitely part of it for sure. Yeah. All right. Well, I suppose we should get on into the news 15 minutes into this podcast. Uh, first news story of the day. We have the Avatar runtime has been announced. Oh, Jesus. Oh, brother. <laughs> Any guesses? Any guesses for some of you? 3.15. Okay. I was going to say 2.56. 356. 3.23. Three twenty three twenty three. Holy shit. Uh well I believe Tyler is the winner. It and is I going did, to be... I, I have not looked. <laughs> I believe you. I believe you. You you haven't looked at the show notes for two years. It's not starting now. I I wasn't too worried about you cheating on this one. Uh three hours and ten minutes is the approximate oh, runtime. Jesus Christ. How long's the first one? Out there. Two hours and forty six, I believe okay. is what this says. Something like that. So yeah. Um let's see. Uh the film two hours and forty one was the first one. Um I'm not I don't hate it. James Cameron's what did Titanic in three hours and fourteen minutes. True true. It's you know, it's it's whatever. He's gonna do whatever he wants. It took goddamn 13 years i wouldn't if it was under three hours i'd honestly be more surprised yeah so i i to your point i definitely don't think the runtime is surprising but it's yeah it's not i guess because it's just one thing I've, I've been on record i feel like a broken record just saying that but it's like man this the amount of time you have to commit to this especially when you want to go to a theater that's like a four-hour commitment yeah. which with something like this you you are going to have to there's no way this is going uh vod right away right Correct. So it's like no, this you count your drive to your local theater, whatever you want to do, previews, all that, then getting home, then driving home. Yeah, this is a four four hour plus commitment. You just got to carve out a chunk of time to see this thing. Yeah, man, that's a half a day venture, you know, because I ain't going to want to do anything after I see this movie. I'm just going to be chilling. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And that already yeah. kind of like writes off like the nighttime show like you almost got to see this yeah like, yeah you yeah, at like a four yeah. or five exactly you you're seeing this at four day. you're yeah you're seeing this at four you're getting out at 10 p.m <laughs> yeah so yeah um i don't know i'm obviously still gonna see this it, the runtime doesn't change anything for me although i don't know we, i've it's, that's just very long for today's standards with with our attention spans getting shorter and TikTok and reels and whatnot, giving us 60 seconds of, of content and enjoyment, and then we just get a new thing. Like, to sit there for three hours is, is asking a lot of some people, but um, again, it's not going to make that much of a difference, I don't think, for if people go and see this. I think this will still do very well. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it'll definitely sell like crazy for sure. It is. Yeah. Do you guys think it's going to end up being the highest grossing film of this year? I don't, know year? Talk, I don't know if we talked about that already. Yeah, maybe we, we did. I think but... you brought it up uh, yeah. not too long ago, but I think we said the only other one that could beat it would be Black like... Panther, which... Yeah. Oh, there's, there's I... Top Gun, too. Top Gun's got to be. And Top yeah. Gun. Oh, I forgot about yeah. Top Gun. Yeah, so that's actually going to be really tight. I don't know. I don't know if I have a good... I don't know if... That's a great question. I think... My gut's telling me Black Panther. Yeah, I, I think I'm with you. My, that's what my gut tells me is Top Gun was great. Everyone loved it. Did it, re- it reached a billion globally, I think, right? I'm pretty sure. Yeah, that thing's still in theaters. Obviously, they put it back. You know what I mean? Yeah, but I mean, sure you, can, you can go to AMC and, yeah. and see that movie today. Yeah. Which is a testimony so, to how, how good it is. Yeah, I think it's... I, I don't know if Avatar has it, but holy shit, that's like a lot of... That's a that's a good question. Nathaniel, Ty, you guys have a good guess. Um, I think Avatar might pull it off on a global scale. 
Globally, mm-hmm. yeah. Globally, I think Avatar would probably do it. Are you saying that because you think Top Gun is just like that's just like an American movie to the core? You know um, what I mean? No, because I think it's done relatively well overseas, but I just think Avatar is just um like I feel like there will be a, a, a little bit of a resurgence around around the avatars and uh mm. or it could just go I don't know, I'm 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 making a gamble here. I'm just gonna say yeah. I'm going to put my trust in, in James Cameron and see what he pulls off. Or it'll fail spectacularly, which will be interesting too. So, Well, just consider, isn't China already the biggest box office kind of market in the world? Probably. I, I'm pretty sure they're bigger than us at this point with the m- amount of people they have over there. So, like, whatever does well in China is is got the biggest chance to take it. And I think Avatar of these three movies, Avatar is by far going to be the most popular over there if i had to guess so i think i think you're right the thing i think globally avatar probably takes it just because of the foreign box office domestically though i think it's black panther mm. well that's a good question blake well, i guess we'll have yeah. to wait and see for sure our next news story <sighs> i don't know where we stand on this franchise anymore but we'll see if this changes anything lupita nyong'o to star in a quiet place day one. Oh my gosh. <laughs> does that uh, does that change anything for you guys? Haven't we done day one you already? Do? I thought that was the no. last one. <laughs> I, no. thought, I thought that was the second movie. No, yeah. right. no, 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 no the first movie's day one. No, 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 it's not. Well, the second no. movie opening scene is day one, correct? Yes. yes. Ah, okay. Yeah. And it's they close. went that and they were like, yep, give me an. An hour and 45 minutes of that, please. <laughs> Sign me yep. the fuck up. <laughs> that's, yeah. the, that's what the, Lupita Nyong'o said. She said, Sign me the fuck up. I want to I wanna do that. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, so, at least yeah. she's getting paid to do it, though. <laughs> for sure. Uh, I'm sure so she's I didn't ask. She's this. awesome. Yeah, um, she's great. Uh, she but, is, right? Yeah. yeah. And this could be from, good. And wasn't this coming from some guy that we trust, like the pig guy? Wasn't it is this the coming from guy. the pig man? Um, what is his name? Uh, Michael Sarnowski. That one. So, um, yeah. Yeah. You know, we'll see. I think if we'll anything, see. set it far away from that, like, whatever town they're in right now. Like, put it in, like, Haddonfield, Detroit or something like that. Or put it in, like, uh, in Texas or something. Yeah, definitely. I, I, to your point, I would like to see it in an urban city. Yeah, that would make sense, right? Yeah. Yeah, that'd be cool. Like Cloverfield kind of kind of thing. Yeah. Make it found footage. No. All right. <laughs> <laughs> that documentary uh, class is getting to your head. It is. You're it really losing is. all, everything, everything, all everything, love for everything should be found footage. Conventional storytelling. What is wrong with you? Uh, I've been watching too much Werner Herzog. Yeah. Criticism. Out here yeah. with your TikToks and your documentaries. <laughs> Yep, those two go hand in hand for my generation. That's that's like, all it is. We love TikTok and we love documentaries. Is, is TikTok not nothing is. if not just a very short documentary? You know, you're getting really introspective here. And found life. footage. I'll, I'll bring TikTok that up to my professor. Well. Thank you. Okay, I don't know if we could consider it found footage. Am I finding it just because I scrolled? Someone, someone will someone find was, it. I mean, I think found footage implies that we found it because it was lost. But if someone's posting it on TikTok. They didn't lose the footage, so I don't. No, think you just you it. start the movie with a little robot picking it up, and then um, finding it after TikTok has destroyed all of us, anyways. And then we can we can view it back as the viewer, as this is the start. Don't worry about it; it's meta. Well, well we already <laughs> sounds like the, a perfect uh, concept for Backrow Banter Productions' first ever feature film. All right. So I was like, well, we already have the 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 film. Uh, TikTok is bad for this generation and bodies, 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 or bodies times three or bodies, bodies cubed. Bodies, bodies cubed. Bodies cubed. Bodies cubed. <laughs> I think that's what we were saying here, right? Yeah. Yes, bodies cubed. So we already have that movie going for us, but we, we might be able to double down on it. Uh, yeah. Um, anyway, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not completely out on a quiet place. I liked, um, the second one much more than I think everyone else here. Um, so we'll see. I just, they need, a, they need something new with this kind of type of horror. I feel like 
they couldn't really reinvent the wheel with the second one because just the first one was so special. But we'll see what they can do with the with the day one origin story per se. Um, and Lupita Nyong'o is great, so she is. Yeah. Uh, any Witcher fans in the house? Yeah. Have you watched the show? I have. All three seasons. Um, I think I'm pretty sure. Maybe two for sure. I don't know if I. I've seen the finished. first one. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't think I. I watched some of season two. It was good. Ish. Okay. Well, how do you guys feel about a new Geralt, Geralt of Rivia? I heard about this. Yes, uh, Liam Hemsworth will be replacing Henry Cavill for The Witcher season four. Henry Cavill, of course, got the bag for Superman, his Superman contract, and was like, I don't need this show anymore. And uh, Liam Hemsworth, who we haven't seen since 2011, was like, hey, I need money. <laughs> no, um, he's on Tubi. So... <laughs> What'd you say? He said he's on Tubi. Oh, he's out there, folks. For you can second, see him. For a second, I thought you said Quibi. No, no, yeah, that's what I meant. He's on Quibi. Yeah, not oh, Tubi. Okay. Okay, okay. He may be on Tubi. I don't know, but he was on Quibi. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, yeah, so Liam Hemsworth is replacing Henry Cavill, which I think that's like a fair exchange. You know, Henry Cavill, I think that was a role. I, at least I was kind of surprised when I heard him wanting to do that. But he's actually a huge gamer. Um, you know, in, insider knowledge here, he's apparently just a really big into games and likes the Witcher games, and it was part of the reason that he did the show in the first place. But I don't know if he expected them to run three seasons of it. And I'm sure after a while, he was just like, all right, I'm out. Um, and good for Liam Hemsworth. I think they, you could swap them. And I don't think many people would question it. They they don't look exactly the same, but they have the same kind of feature set. Does that make sense? See what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, so I think that that will be a fine switch. And I like Liam Hemsworth. I, th I think he's a good actor. So um, I'm not, I've seen most of the first season. I don't know if I finished it, but I've seen most of it. Um, and I, I liked it, but I just, am not a big enough Witcher fan, um, to really go back and invest. But if you are, you do have season four, just a bit of a, a bit of a change of schedule, change of the programming, you know? Um, I just, yeah, I, I've never really understood, nor do I overly care for when that stuff happens. I think that that takes away quite a bit from kind of putting yourself in the story. Cause when you when you have that connection with that character and whatever they've built, I feel like that's that's very uh, lost in quite a few ways when you when you switch. Sure, sure. Uh, and then our last news story of the day: Vision TV show in the works with WandaVision head writer. So rather than do WandaVision season two, uh, which people were kind of like wondering if they were going to do they're doing house of harkness which is um katherine hahn's character what was her name in that show agatha harkness agatha yeah there you go um so she's getting her little spin-off show from the first season of wandavision and rather than kind of do a season two of wandavision because the show writer was like i kind of like it the idea of wandavision just being like a, a comic book arc or like a run of a comic sure um and so instead, they're doing kind of like a, another spinoff show of that called Vision Quest. Featuring Ooh. Paul Bettany, of course. Do but you so. think he'll find himself? I bet he will. Do you think he'll be resurrected in the multiverse? I bet he will. No. Nope. I don't think so. Think he's, you don't think so? I think he's dead. I think he's dead No forever. one's dead. No one's dead in the multiverse. Nope. This one is. He's the only one that is continuously dead. He's so dead that is that, is that canon? Uh, no. But in okay. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's so dead. He's actually anti dead. This is getting meta once again. The thing. <laughs> what is what is with you, this app? Oh, you can't keep up. It's just the world we live in, man. We got TikToks. We got <laughs> yeah, God damn. I'm tying it all together. We can't cut anything. <laughs> yeah. Um, so <laughs> Paul Bettany will be back in this found footage Marvel Marvel show. Oh my gosh! Um, <laughs> um, no, actually, anyway. I support this. I want it all shot from Vision's point of view. 
like he's got a GoPro strapped <laughs> like, into his like head. It's, like it's hardcore Henry. Yeah, instead of instead of they've replaced his soul stone with just a GoPro now. <laughs> and that's it from now on. It's it's just called Soul Quest and it's the soul it's the soul no, it's, stone POV. Yeah, it's the vision quest. That's why that's why we have it. Yeah. It's it's just a first person. It's actually the entire show is is VR. You yeah. can only you can it's a tied in with meta. You can only watch the show in VR. It's a 360 cam. It's just guaranteed to make you vomit. Guaranteed. It's um yeah. Um I'm on board for this. Paul Bettany's great. He's, yeah. he's fucking fantastic. So give him more stuff. I'm sad that like he's out of the mainline MCU, but I'm glad they're actually keeping his character around because I feel like Vision peaked right as his arc ended. Mm. And so it was kind of sucked because I liked him the most when, yeah, he which was is kind good of storytelling, a, sure. But, you know, um, I'm glad we're still seeing him around. He's kind of a forgotten character at this point. He really is. We've come a long way. An entire phase of Marvel has come and gone. Thank Would you. Would you believe it? <laughs> I can. I'll, I'll tell you that much. I can believe Blake's it. like, I've counted every minute. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, uh, there's, this has kind of just been announced. There's really no um, kind of production plan or release date set yet, but we will keep tabs on it, I'm sure. And I'm sure we'll see it before we know it, and I'm sure we won't really be on the lookout because there's a billion other Marvel things to be looking for. I'm waiting for a week where Marvel isn't in the news. Let's see if it, we can make that happen. Never. I think that's their plan exclusively. Yeah. We're this always in the help. news. I'm in purgatory. Anyways, moving well, on. That's it for the news. Like I said, you can go watch an Avatar trailer if you want to, but we don't, so we did not. Um, then that means it's time to get into Adam Schwartz's completely subjective new to streaming list for the week of October 30th through November 5th. We're into November. Holy shit. Here we that are. That was fast. That was quick. Coming to Netflix, we get uh, K and Peel seasons one through three. Is that all the seasons? Did they do more than that? Um, maybe. I feel like there, I feel like there is, but like. I really don't know, honestly. There are five seasons. Okay. Apparently. I was going to say, I feel like that show ran longer than three. I felt like it did too, especially because I've watched so much of it. Dude, that show is incredible. I love it. They they have a TikTok account that is just bits from that show clipped out. And I every single time one comes up, I watch it. Doesn't matter if I've seen it before. Doesn't matter if it was the same clip I watched last week. I'll watch it. It's funny as hell. Uh, Netflix is getting Moneyball. That's coming back. It's been on there, I feel like, forever. Uh, oh, yeah. Oblivion, the Tom Cruise flick from 2013. Oh, nice. Uh, Training Day, a pod favorite. Hey. A movie we have reviewed. Up in the Air from 09. Uh, they're get, we're getting Blockbuster Season 1. This is an original doc. A new series from the creator of Superstore and Brooklyn Nine-Nine set in the last remaining Blockbuster video rental store. Is this a show or is this a doc? I thought it was a doc. I believe it is a show. It is a situational ah. comedy. Hilarious. Uh, I mean, I that know. guy that does Superstore has definitely worked retail. Or girl, I'm not sure who the showrunner was. but um, So if anyone feels like I, like, I feel like if anyone knows what it is to, you know, run a 90s retail store, it's probably them and make it funny. So go for oh, it. Oh, it's... Um, uh, What's his face? Park? I think Randall his Park, name. right? Yeah. Randall Park, yeah. Okay, he's at the head of this. That's interesting. I think it's, I, there's been like a lot of things on film Twitter. It's like Netflix is just kind of like Robin rolling over. Yeah. yeah, just fucking, yeah, digging the grave for Blockbuster. Not only did they put him out of business, now they're making a sitcom out of it, uh, which is uh, very accurate. Uh, and then the last thing coming to Netflix is Enola Holmes 2, the spinoff of Sherlock Holmes' daughter featuring uh, Lily daughter. Bobby Brown. It's his sister. Sister. Sorry, I didn't watch the first one. I have no idea. Gosh, so you know Lily's nothing. Daughter. So casual. I don't, I don't know anything. You're right. Well, they got a sequel coming if you're a fan of the first one. Amazon Prime is getting mm. Annihilation. Uh, movie. Ah. Approval of the pod. Uh, being John Malkovich, Blade Runner, and Blade Runner 2049. 
uh, yes. Dune, the original 1984 Dune, is coming to Amazon Prime. They're also getting Fight Club, Little Women from 94. That's not the 2018 one or whatever it was. Uh, now You See Me and Now You See Me 2. Super Bad, a comedy classic, of course. Uh, the Machinist, The Perks of Being a Wallflower, War, Ho- War Horse, and The Cabin in the Woods. Yay. Coming to Hulu is 28 Weeks Later, 8 Mile, Dawn of the Dead. I know what you did last summer, and I still know what you did last summer. Mamma Mia, Oblivion as well, uh, coming to Hulu. Office Space, Secret Window, Shaun of the Dead, Silent Hill, Snakes on a Plane, Terminator 3, Rise of the Machines, and Terminator Salvation. Also getting the perks of being a wallflower. And then Saw 1, 2, 3, 3D, 4, 5, 6. <laughs> okay. But- all, is that all of them? More than six saws? No, yeah, I think there's eight Seven now. saws? Holy shit. Are you including Spiral? No. Oh, my God. <laughs> Actually, Spiral is one of the better saws, man. I mean, it's got to go in their top You guys half. hated that movie. Well, well, I hate that I don't movie. know if you've seen all the saws, Adam, but a lot of them. I haven't really seen any of them. Yeah. So, I mean, I got to put you, that but You guys in ripped that movie a new one. Yeah, I mean, I, I'd put it in the top. Four. That's how bad the other ones are. <laughs> it's been a long time First since I've seen the other ones. Yeah, I, I think okay. I did a deep dive last Halloween, or maybe it was twenty twenty Halloween. Yeah, it was gotcha. it was rough though. First two are first two are pretty good, and after that, it's just bad shit crazy. As Nathaniel <laughs> okay. would say, HBO Max is getting five hundred days of summer, fifty first dates. All of the Harry Potter movies are coming back eight back to HBO. I believe they were on Peacock. Um, before then, we're getting Neighbors, the comedy from 2014, Raging Bull, the Scorsese flick from '80, uh, Seven, a bunch of Star Trek movies, literally almost all of them. It seems like I don't know how many there are, but there's so many on this list, I can't imagine there being more Star Trek movies besides the new trilogy. I'll leave that one off. All the older ones, uh, and then Disney Plus is getting Andor episode nine, and then. Marvel Studios Assembled, the making of She-Hulk Attorney at Law, so they're behind the scenes thing on She-Hulk and then Marvel Studios Legends they're kind of like recap slash like summary series on like the different Marvel heroes, they're getting one for gearing up for Black Panther, so they have a King, Ch- King T'Challa, Princess Shuri and Dora, the Dora Milahi? Milaje, Milaje I believe is what they are Milaje. Um, those are all coming to Disney Plus and that is it for what we're watching. Nathaniel. Yes. What have you been watching, man? Oh, well, I'll tell you, Adam. Uh, I caught up on Andor, except for today's episode, because we're a day late, actually. So, uh, Tyler, are you caught up on Andor? I am not. Okay. Then I will keep it a secret, but I will say I did text the group chat this week and said Blake should watch Andor because it is very good. Did. So it yeah. is very good, and I recommend it to most people. Unless you just really hate sci-fi, I think you will like this movie uh, show, not movie. Uh, I watched more of that uh, Critical Role that I was talking about last week, which is the ah. Dungeons and Dragons uh, deal. And yeah, it's um, I find it very calming. I don't know what it is. Really? It's, yeah, it's just like a very just like easygoing show for me to put on and like have in the background and like wind down to. So um, yeah, I like that show. I also got to actually I got a uh, I got to a, a a back row performance this week. My brother and I went and saw Wicked uh, down on no Chicago way. Broadway. Yeah, it was a uh, it was a really oh, good show. Okay. I had not seen it yet uh, or before, and it was uh, it was really well done and uh, it was a good time. So, hats off to the Wicked crew. Uh, if you ch- have a chance, go see it. And. Oh. What else did I get to? I got to Turning the Tables this week, which was, but it was an mm. older episode. I want to say they did Untitled Unmastered, and that was really, really fun. I saw that, but I didn't click it. And I think that came out maybe two weeks ago. Yeah. But that was one that was so close to drawing me back, but I just ended up clicking something else on YouTube. For sure, for um, sure. But yeah, I, I, that's, I, I have that kind of like saved for Queued myself up. to go back and get to. Absolutely. Yeah. Would recommend. It's a fun time. I haven't watched one of those in a while, but I feel like I might soon. Yeah, I gotta. I I like see albums that I want to like hear them listen to, but then I just haven't. Gone. Right. I don't think I've listened to one really since maybe since Mr. Morale. 
I, I think I'm with you too. I think that's the last time I. Yeah, well, I go. mean those things are only like I can't just like go and like binge watch them listening to music. Right. Like, I was cool like watching like two or three because it was new, but like I don't at this point it's just like I don't need to watch that week by week. For sure. But it is good content. I like I do like those. They're both cool. Cool guys. And I got to a movie on Netflix uh, that no way. came out Netflix recently. Has movies. Yeah, occasionally. Um, it is called okay. The Stranger. <laughs> has anyone else heard of this? I've heard of uh, the strangers. <laughs> it is not, not that. So this is a a movie that I would encourage you, you to go into uh, blind if you can, just because of how it kind of sets up the story. But it is about um, it's a true story, which oh. I didn't know going into it uh, ahead of time. And it starts with a guy that's on a bus. Uh, it's set in Australia, and it's a guy on a bus going to a new town, and the, he meets another man on the bus, the titular stranger. And um, that guy offers him some work, and he's kind of down on his luck, and he takes him up on the job, and then things kind of go from there, and maybe things are not all as they seem. Maybe they are, but uh, yeah, it's it's really probably fascinating. They, they prob- it probably isn't, right? I mean, what kind of <laughs> movie surprised. are things where they seem? <laughs> <laughs> You'd be surprised, but it, it's... Um, it takes a really interesting look into the story and like angle for it. Um, it's starring Joel Edgerton as well as Sean Harris, which we would know on the podcast because we've seen him before. Sean Harris is he always uh, plays? Uh, he's one of the villains in the new Mission Impossible's. He's like the one of the main guys. Um, yeah, I, he always dude, I plays like, like creepy dudes. I, I I know for a fact that I'd recognize him. So. Yeah, he's also in Prometheus as well. Um, but I, he might be one of my picks for like one of those like low key, like best actors working kind of thing. Um, he's, yeah, he's always great. And, uh, yeah. So would recommend stranger it's on Netflix. It is, it's like a dark crime, uh, movie, not as like dark as like, um, prisoners, but I would say in a similar vein in some ways too, kind of a similar vibe in some areas as well. So, um, yeah, that was really cool on Netflix. Check it out if you want. And the last thing I got to was Guillermo del Toro's Cabinet of Curiosities. Did anyone oh, else go in on this? Uh, no. Okay. Um, yeah, this was my Halloween watch. It is, if you are unfamiliar, a collection of um, short films or episodes that are all curated by Guillermo del Toro. And I believe most of them are like people that he has chosen to take over or direct these um segments each one's a different story obviously and they're all uh little horror um segments and and everything and they're really fun so i've watched three of them so far and each one's pretty different from the last one like in terms of like what the monster is or like if there is a monster and kind of you know supernatural realistic what who knows um but they all have a pretty distinct flair to them and i'm definitely enjoying them so far sounds good Okay. Uh, how, how long are those watch those? Sorry, I was uh Ooh. Sorry there, everyone. I was uh coughing off mic there for a second. Um what did you ask me, Blake? Um how long are those episodes running you? Uh are, are the, they an hour? They're forty five to an hour. Yeah, and there's like okay. one that's like thirty eight as well too, so it just kinda depends so far. Are they very hit or miss in your opinion, or are they kind of um, constant? Definitely high level, mid-tier. Definitely depends on what scares you for sure. Um, but I would say overall, from like a production value standpoint, and just like not feel, I never felt like I've wasted my time with them so far yet. You know, and gotcha. I feel like especially for me and you who have quite varied horror tastes, like it will probably mm-hmm. be able to enjoy most of it. And Tyler too, and Adam, everyone. But um, if there's something that like you maybe don't like or something like that. You know, there might be an episode that's that's on there. I'm not really sure on that yet. Like I said, I haven't seen all of it, so. Sure. Okay. But that was all that I watched for this week. I will kick it over to Tyler Vidalez. What you been watching, dude? Well, prepare to be disappointed. Oh, you could never disappoint <laughs> me, sir. I've just, uh, I've been uh, uber busy and uh, haven't really had time to watch. For a second, I thought, <laughs> for a second, I thought you were going to say, I've been uber eating on the side. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't had much time. I mean, I do have a wedding to pay for, so. Yeah. Hey, oh. Good luck with that, brother. <laughs> love, true uh, love. 
but uh but yeah I, I really didn't get around to much um there has really been one main thing that i will talk about because um I, i've actually consumed this the most um but uh everyone knows that uh, i am a bit of a an anime fan and um i uh was looking for something kind of kind of new but still kind of felt like pretty you know common to watch and so i came across um baruto which is um like the it's literally called baruto um naruto next generation so uh okay. it's um baruto is naruto's son and uh he's basically got his own anime now but um oh my will it end uh probably not because they're pushing like over 200 episodes already in in baruto correct so you have like a bajillion episodes of Naruto and then Naruto Shippuden and now Baruto? Correct. This is a great. This is fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Even, so... even Marvel will run for their money. <laughs> but animes are pretty common to do that. that no, that's, no, that's no, 100%. That, that's relatively, 100%. Uh, it's relatively just, common. I, so. I can never, I love anime, but I, can, I can't do one of those shows. I can't it's, do Dragon Ball, One it, Piece, or Naruto. I just, I just, there's no shot in hell. It's a lot for sure. Um, no doubt about it. Yeah, but um, yeah, I've uh, I've been watching that quite a bit, and uh, it's been uh, it's been really good actually. I've been uh, pleasantly surprised on uh, how good that it's been. So that's really been kind of my main thing. A um, couple of streamers on YouTube and stuff like that, but uh, other than that, it's uh, it's really been kind of wedding planning and work. Uh, I will probably free up a little bit of time now because I don't have to deal with uh, two stores. Um, Lake Zurich is finally closed, thank God. But um, yeah, other than that, that's that's really been uh, kind of my main thing. So uh, I will uh, actually pass it off to uh, Blake. Cool. Um, I got to a few things. Uh, I was kind of trying to finish up just my horror binge uh, for the month of October, uh, or I guess basically just every month of my life in general. Um, <clears throat> got to a few things. And one I talked to Nathaniel about at the store over the weekend. So for starters, I uh, got to audition, uh, which is uh, in yes. Japanese. Did I mention this last week? No, no, it was just me and you talking okay. about it at the store. Okay, that's, that's what I thought. Thank you. So I got to audition, which is a Japanese horror movie from the 90s. Um, so I finally got to that, uh, to kind of tag on to, to that uh, horror wish list, quote unquote. And... Uh, Pleasantly, I, I don't know, not pleasant surprise. It met my expectations, I would say. This is one of those films that I, I've kind of seen floating around in forums and on, on Reddit, um, YouTube, things of that nature. It's just kind of one of the, the better international horror films we got um, up there with um, Martyrs, um, a high tension, which Adam fucking shits on every time we talk about it. Nonetheless, it's all in those bucket of, of, of pretty good international horror films. And, uh, like I said, this is one from the 90s that you could probably go on to make the case that started kind of like, I don't know if we ever get like a Saw type series mm -hmm. if this movie doesn't exist. Right. Um, I think it goes about it in a different way. This certainly goes about it in a very, very slow burn um, kind of psychological horror at first. Um, and then like the last act is just like completely different. Um, yeah. Yeah. Really, really good. Kind of the premise on that is um, there's, a, there's a gentleman who's uh, widowed. Um, so he now lives with his son. Him and his son have a great relationship. And his son's kind of like, hey, and his son and his co are kind of like, hey, like you should probably get back on the scene and start dating. So why don't we put together um, an audition for a TV show that's not going to exist? And we're just going to audition different women, right? And you can kind of pick your partner from there. And that's kind of the premise of that. He ends up meeting one woman who's kind of not who she says she is. And, and it goes in. And yeah, the, the, the final act of that movie is, is awesome. It's got some of the more um, disturbing images. And I didn't really know that this film was like that. I thought it was just a straight psychological horror. Um, and then we get to the final act. And yeah, there's even a few things of even kind of me with, with my uh, broadened background of um kind of this genre there's still a few things that like i was watching and i was like oh that's nasty that's creepy so um pretty good though um outside of that i did get to two other um found footage horror films um and that is going to be hell hell house llc which is a 
Aren't you familiar with that? Or is Nathaniel familiar with that? Yeah, I've heard of it. Okay. So Hell House LLC um, is a found footage film from, I want to say like 2015 or so, 2015, 2014. Right. Um, and it's these people who, uh, it's a group of friends who they run a haunted house, right? And they end up, uh, they're, they're, there's, a, there's an abandoned hotel where some bad events happened in the past. And they purchased this property and they're setting up a haunted house there on the grounds where something is bad happened at this hotel. So that's kind of the premise of the movie. But what makes it awesome is that it's a found footage and it's shot through basically like a, a documentary style. So like there's people kind of like, yeah, so this is what happened at the scene. And then it kind of cuts to like some found footage from the movie. But it really plays like you're just kind of interviewing the local civilians. It's kind of similar to the Blair Witch Project in that aspect. Um, so, but uh, really good. I would say that's one of the better one of the better Halloween found footage films, I, I would say, because I went on a binge of like three of them <laughs> in, in a row. The next one I watched was um, The House's October Built. I have seen that movie. I have okay, seen so, yeah. The House's October Built. Yeah. Yeah. So I saw that next, and that's kind of similar. That's That came out after Hell House LLC. Um, I do like Hell House LLC significantly more. But the premise of the House October Builder are these people who are going to haunted houses and they're just looking for like the biggest haunt they can find. Right. So they end up going to like this backwoods, super haunted house. And it's all sought through found footage. So they're kind of videotaping everything and taking the cameras in a haunted house. And nonetheless, they find like the best haunt they can. Um, and you're kind of up to the you're, it's kind of up to the viewer. Like, OK, is this actually a haunted house or like are these people actually tormenting these people? Um, but eh. It's okay, not crazy. I think if you wanted, um, I saw I saw a funny list on a uh, letterboxed, um, and how they kind of worded this. Let me see if I can find it really quick. Give me one second. Um, and they kind of they kind of worded, and they were like, uh, so this is quote on letterboxed from uh, Ethan, patron of letterboxed. So it's like list of movies where white people go to walk through a haunted house, but not everything is as it seems ranked accordingly. One is Hell House LLC. Two is Houses October Built. Three is Hellfest. And I watched all three of those, and I would agree with Ethan's list. So uh, wherever Ethan is, shout out to him. I, I agree with Hellfest, uh, which is not, is not found footage, though. But that movie's just bad all around. Hell House LLC and the House October Built are pretty good. Uh, but yeah, nonetheless funny. I can't believe I watched all three of those, like, back to back to back, basically days kind of leading up to Halloween. And um I don't think either of them are, or any of them are sitting where audition is, but I do, um, I do have some good praise for Hell House LLC. I would certainly recommend that as like a Halloween viewing for anybody in the upcoming years. So that's all I got to, um, and I've got to spirit it away. So that's it. Nice. And Bears football, and we made a big trade, fellas. So I am, we I did. am excited. We did. That. I am. I got to touch on that. I've been trying not to Who's touch on the Bears. But the fuck suck. Yes, but we're we're making progress, fellas. We haven't seen the Bears do. I've never seen my entire life, to be completely honest with you. So yeah, it's pretty unprecedented. I agree. So we'll see, man. We'll see. <laughs> and Packers <laughs> are still ass they, very bad. They, they might yeah. be worse than the Bears. So that's fine. Oh no, yeah. It's uh. I, I was telling one of my buddies um the other day. He's he's from Wisconsin. One of my good um friends from college. But uh, I mean, it was inevitable, man. And I've got to tell Tyler here, like you guys have been good for twenty plus years, like my whole life, dog. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> to your point, you've never seen the Packers be bad. You know what I mean? Like, it was gonna happen one day. I didn't expect it to be this year, but I'll take it, man. I think the Packers' reign is. I think it's over. I don't think it's over, but it's definitely nah, it's uh, over. You're, uh, you're done. It's over, dude. He's in denial. Nah, it's over, dude. It's <laughs> over. It's nah. over, dude. It's definitely a hiccup, and we'll probably lose Rodgers next year. But um, I mean, that's that's our thing, bro. We we have quarterbacks that people might not think are that great, and we have them sit on the bench and practice yeah. behind. And I think Love is going to be really good, and um, we still have uh, our uh, our head coach uh, Matt Lafleur, and uh, I have For faith sure. in him because he's one yeah. of the most winningest head coaches at his age, and um for for what he's done in the last four years and uh yeah i, I got faith i you know i've kind of come to terms with the fact that this season is just shocked but uh 
I'm not uh I'm not too worried about it. Not throwing the towel in all the way. Fair no. enough. Spoken like a Packers fan, right? Spoken like somebody who's never had a lose. So right. yeah, bro. I you know, even if they do, like I forgot, dude. I'm the first person that people call, and they're like, <laughs> so, oh, yeah. like I, one, I don't play on the fucking team, and, and two, <laughs> uh, yeah, like just look at our records. So like, I'm cool with it. I understand, you know, you can't win them all, and uh, yeah, I'll uh, I'll take that shit on the chest. Like it's fucking that's that is what it is. Yeah, for sure. Blake, how many uh, years until we have a Bears Super Bowl win? Oh man! Do you think we see it in our lifetime? I mean, I think you're. I think you're gonna I, get to like Cubs territory, bro. I mean, I we honestly so might. Man, we yeah. honestly There's might. Too many other I, teams I, that are too good. Oh my god! That's yeah, and the Bears so hard to tell. I feel like I gotta go with yes. We'll see one, right? Yeah. Ba- Barry and I'm alive for a significant amount of time. Yeah. I I feel like you will, and now I don't think I want to go on board to say that like we're getting one in the next five years with Justin Fields. Like I haven't seen that type of, of growth yet. You know, I got to see where we're yeah. at maybe next year or 2024. Right. But we got a long nonetheless, way to they're, go. they're just going in the right direction where they've been pretty uh, stagnant. I would say the past probably four to five years. So it's like the best bears fan saying ever next year. We'll get them next year. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know, I know. I've turned into that guy, but we, we we should be we should be decent next year as long as we draft well. So we have draft picks to get easier with an arm and a leg for Justin Fields. Like, are we still in the debt for that? Are we still in the no? Debt? So we're no longer. So we have a first round draft. No so way. That's the key. Yes. That's wild. Watch him like draft another QB. <laughs> Oh man, that'd be some bear <laughs> shit though. <laughs> you know, like all jokes aside, that would be thing bear ever. shit. So I don't know. I hope they don't do that. But it seems like they're kind of over that phase of like just the really poor management of shit. You know what I mean? Well, yeah. So yeah, we'll see. New coach, new GM. And, uh, yeah, we'll see. You got anything? Knows, on maybe the maybe out? that uh, new stadium will give them a little, you know, shot in the. Oh arm. yeah, for sure, for yeah. sure. Five minutes from my house, you know, we'll be in the yeah. presence of greatness. Papa Schwartz, I mean, that, that's whose presence they'll be in, not mine. I was going to say, I thought you were saying you were going to be in the presence of greatness with them. No, no, like, no. They, they know, they presence were of be... mediocrity, probably, but not, not greatness. <laughs> no, no, they'll be in our presence, Arlington Heights' presence, and so that'll give them the, the, the spurt they need, you know? Anyway, speaking of, speaking of spurts, Max Verstappen had quite the sp- sprint spurt at Mexico. Mm, I, did, I did watch that. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, good race. I, yeah, I just I you know um at this point I'm rooting for everybody else except for Max because he's already got the championship of the bag. And, he's got uh, constructors, drivers, just, uh, and he's got the record. It's just yeah, and I I just assume he's gonna win. I just I feel like they're just completely and utterly untouchable. So um, so yeah, I just I want Checo to to kind of rack up as many points as he can and um. You know, like even the the 100%. Austin race, I was like, just give it to Hamilton. Just let him have it. Nah, nah. I think so, I like Hamilton, but I think it'd be funny if he had a season where he didn't win a race. After yeah, like I actually won. saw a thing that uh, Fernando Alonso had stated that uh, he respects Max's two championships uh, more than all of Hamilton's seven combined because the only oh. person that um, uh, Hamilton had to worry about was his own teammate for seven years. <laughs> You know, honestly, that's um, that's pretty that's pretty intense. But I, he's not too far off. I mean, that car, that Mercedes was just it was insane. Like, and there was no yeah. cap on salaries, or you know, yeah, for yeah, yeah, for cars and um, production. And Wait, have, have you guys kept up with the whole the whole uh, cost yeah. cap scandal? Yep. That's yeah. Funny. So they will uh, receive a a, a relatively have to find in our terms, but in Formula One terms, it's really, I think it's like it's a 3% right? or something like that. It really doesn't make up a whole lot of what they put into their vehicles. Yeah. The biggest kicker, though, is um, they will lose uh, research and development time in their wind tunnel at the beginning of their season. So I that will be an that asset part. that they will not be able to use yeah. for quite some time. Which is very brutal, actually. Like It that. hurts, but... Depending on what kind of team you are and where you want to spend your money, 
you either spend that money on your arrow up front or space it out throughout the year or do it on the back end depending on what your strategy is for the championship and where other people are at and their research and um yeah, their upgrades for the car and their, stuff like that so we'll just have to switch it up a little bit yeah yeah well you know it's not it's they had a slow start this season so like and they still won everything so who cares if they have a slow start the next season yeah i i think they'll be all right yeah i think so too they seem to have these new regulations down although i will i'm very interested to see how everyone kind of rebounds um everyone else after this season because it seems like the one year of experience and like mercedes the fact that they've kind of recovered as well as they have um it'll be interesting to see what they do yeah and we got a lot of new blood coming out of the grid so it'll be interesting to see um how things yeah. get mixed up with some new rookies and stuff like that we've got piastri coming right and who else is there um there's that kid from the u.s that might uh hit oh um, are they really trying to bring him in yeah yeah as long as he has enough um uh, points on his super license at the end of the season, he will absolutely race for them. Huh. So that is the only condition they're waiting for. And then there is word on the street that um, uh, Ricardo will end up being a reserve driver for Red Bull. For Red Bull? Mm hmm. That'd be interesting. Yeah, because yeah. there's no one's going to pick him up on a contract to, to have yeah. an actual seat, but he's obviously yeah, still a good person to have in your back pocket. And. It, he was good when he was in a Red Bull, and I have a feeling if you put him in a Red Bull again that he will absolutely be able to to put some points up. Yeah, you kind of got to wonder if you're him, what happens if you never leave Red Bull, you know? Um, I What what realistically what would have happened is he would have turned into the Valtteri Botas to uh, Lewis Hamilton. Where, 100%. Yeah, so it's like you can't really blame him, but also doesn't seem like he had the success he was looking for. Obviously. Yeah. Either way, he's still a, a very happy individual. Oh, and, um, I, I'm just, sure he's on top like, of even, <laughs> even the well, Ricardo. Even after the race uh, this week, like you saw him doing the interviews, and like he hit Yuki Sonoda. Like that was definitely his fault. He shouldn't have been yeah. in there. Oh my and, god, uh, that was a terrible, terrible <laughs> uh, attempt at an overtake. And uh, still came out on P7, and uh, he was just like, even after his interviews, he was just like, yeah, like, it is what it is, like, uh, whatever, I'm having a good time, I don't really give a shit anymore, <laughs> so... Did he really say that? To an extent. <laughs> to an extent, that's funny. Yeah, yeah no, that penalty he had on uh, Sidoto was bad. I was watching that happen live, and I was like, that's just atrocious. <laughs> Like, yeah, he, he and no you got a feel for Sonoda because he was somewhat. Oh my the, God, he, he was yeah. in the points and he did nothing wrong, and he that was a DNF for wrong. him that literally yeah. ripped the side of his car off. Yes, yeah, and that's kind of just how F one goes sometimes. Um, but it still sucks. Facts. I mean, um, Carlos signs at Austin. Like that's got to be even worse. If you're on Ferrari, it's worse. Period. Yeah. <laughs> uh man poor Charles. anyway uh yeah so i watched the mexico grand prix um what else did i watch i have been keeping up with succession i have finished season one i'm on to season two hooray uh, i'm like halfway done this dude the season finale nathaniel of season one mm. is honestly one of my has become was like instantly one of my favorite episodes of television ever it's, like i think it was so crazy good that yeah that episode is so incredibly well done and the whole sequence towards the end um with ken is just it took my breath away like i was like holy shit like this is insane um just you know that that show i was i was watching it the other night and i was like looking at i i you know skip the skip the intro most of the time but i watched oh it no you can't do the, you can't do the skip the intro man it gets it gets to you the music of the it, intro uh yeah it does it does um but I also it's also like three minutes long. Yeah, it's like, fair enough. Yeah, and I've I've got ADD, so I can't just like you know sit there. Uh, <laughs> anyway, I was watching the the intro this time around because I don't skip it every time, but you know I can't do it every I can't watch it every time anyway. Um, and it's executive produced by Will Ferrell and it Adam certainly McKay, is yeah which I yeah which like makes total sense that now that I know that, but like I would not have guessed kind of watching the show. Um, but yeah, these, these characters, man, like they do, it's, it's such like a funny show and I love the humor of it, but at the same time, like they, oh, they're like, the worst. 
<laughs> they, yeah. they're the worst and, and the characters are so compelling and the story is so compelling that you're very invested yeah but it's also like you're laughing too because of it's just so absurd it, and like you, it just makes just you so feel absurd. like that's a hundred percent true like that's exactly what it feels right like, <laughs> like no exactly yeah oh yeah in that in that in that season finale yeah but well and just like yeah. in the that bubble of that those people like the uber oh, wealthy sure, sure, like sure. in the like that's that feels like that must be what life is like for them yeah. Oh, definitely. I think what what hit, what the joke that hit home for me is when um, Shiv's in the car with the with with Bernie essentially, and yeah. um, she he she offers him like a gel to clean his hands with after he shakes the hand of the the uh, common man. Yep. She's like, hey, you want some like yeah, pure like, that 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 is stuff. Yeah, exactly. That is stuff that I'm like I can see that happening, yeah. and it just. Yeah, and then I, um, man, I don't know. I could just keep going on about the show. I can't wait to keep going. Um, the, the just, I can't say enough good things. It's, it's so good. And that that season finale, that that sequence with Ken is just like you are watching him, and you can you can feel every emotion he's going through as he goes mm-hmm. through it, and that continues honestly yeah. into the second season. Yeah, like like you you they are doing they just do such a good job of like the first season in the first few episodes, they do a great job of establishing who these characters are, but you see episode by episode, how they're changing and kind of evolving. And, and that is just such a great writing. Right. And, and this, and the, and it's just accelerated in the second season where like, you kind of look at who these characters are now compared to who they were introduced as. And like, they are pretty stark differences. Um, but it like makes sense. Like everything, everything that's different about them tracks. It's not just like they're different because the writers wanted them to be. It's like, no, we saw why we saw this happen, and that's why you know he is this way, or we saw this happen, and that's why she is this way, and, and like that kind of thing. And oh man, I can't say enough good things about the show. I'm very glad I finally got around to it, and it makes sense why everyone was hyping it up so much. It is uh, an incredible show, and I highly recommend. Uh, and then I got to a few documentaries, like I mentioned earlier in the show. I've been we kind of have been doing our cinema verite unit in documentary. And um, so we've been watching some Werner Herzog, which isn't like directly cinema verite per se, but is like it's not of that time period, but it's of that style. Sure. Um, and his films have been incredible. Um, and what an interesting character too. We've kind He's of been an learning. Interesting both. guy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we've kind of been learning both about his films, but also him as a person. Um, very interesting dude. Um, I think he's quickly approaching like the top of the people you'd want to have dinner with. Com- oh like, yeah. hundred percent. You know? Yeah. <laughs> he's, <laughs> like, he's up there. Like, he is. Yeah. He's just insane. Um, but he's all, it's also, it's like interesting hearing his ideas, but then like watching him make movies is actually pretty masterful. Almost like he's just got a very clear vision of what he wants. And although he goes about it in, kind of unethical ways he, he he gets it and it's he doesn't really care if people think it's right or not or controversial or not like yeah. he's just gonna keep doing it and uh more power to you you know but yeah the movies i watched of his were lessons of darkness and um a the little Dieter needs to fly have you seen either nathaniel i have not no um lessons of darkness was made in 92 i believe um and it's very different it's almost hard to even consider well it's Herzog considers it a science fiction film, even though it takes place in Kuwait. Um, mm-hmm. But it's following the Gulf War essentially, and um, and the attacks on Kuwait, and like there are just oil spills and and basically like big, huge oil fires from the wells and whatnot. And so it's it's just a lot of like long takes and long shots of like these just huge pilling you know, things of smoke and whatnot and these huge fires and flame, but like with really grand orchestral music and his goal with the film was kind of to like make it feel like I said, like a sci-fi film. And it almost does, even though it's obviously very earthly. It's just like he introduces everything as if it's like kind of foreign and he's like um, almost like a, someone from another planet, like visiting us and, and like, and it's a lot, a little bit about like the, you know what humanity does with through war and through like damaging our planet and environment and whatnot but like not obviously expressly about that um but it's very good and little Dieter needs to fly is also really good so um i'm interested to see i kind of want to check out more of his stuff but uh herzog thumbs up 
that's pretty much it for me, I think. Anytime I have a chance to watch something, it's pretty much Succession exclusively. So, And I'm watching the World Series. There watching right now, actually. Uh, Houston, last time I checked, it was 0-0. They're now up 5-0. to zero. Oh, shit. Um, I th- they had, yeah, they had bases loaded, nobody out in the top of five, and now it's 5-0. to zero. So, we'll see. I mean, it was 5-0 to zero in the game one, so the time for the Phillies to start hitting. But anyway, I also... Took a trip to the theater to watch a little movie called Spirited Away. Welcome, listeners, to the main review segment of the podcast. Nathaniel, if the listener here is new, or maybe they've just forgotten, can you give them a rundown of how the review segment works? What up, folks? This is the rundown. Um, rubber rundown. Rubber, rubber rundown. Yep. But basically, here on Back Row Banter, our review segment is broken up into two sections. There's the non-spoiler section, and there's the spoiler section. It's pretty self-explanatory. In the non-spoiler segment, uh, we'll go over the movie's IMDb page, who made it, who wrote it, who directed it, all that good stuff. And then uh, we'll go around and talk about its IMDb summary, decide if it's good or not, and then we'll go around the squadron, decide if we would recommend this movie. got to be a yes or no. There is no nuance on the internet. From then on, it'll be the spoiler time. I'll play the spoiler noise, and if you do have uh, not want to have anything spoiled for you, don't come in there, but do come back at the end of the episode to hear where we rank it up on our entropy list, which is our big list of everything we've watched on the podcast, ranked. That being said, Adam, tell me about Spirited Away. I would love to. Uh, this is Spirited Away, made in the year 2001, 21 years old. But man, watching this movie, you'd never guess it. Uh, it, of course, is directed by Hayao Miyazaki and written by Mr. Miyazaki himself, a legend of the uh, animation craft, I would say. I don't know if there's really anyone... More famous in animation in Japan and animation filmmaking than Miyazaki. I feel like he's the man over there, kind of. Uh, no one that I know off the top of my head, but I'm not ignoring that there may be someone I've not heard of. There very well could about. be. I, uh, of course, not uh, well versed in Japanese Hollywood or Japanese, you know, entertainment industry. But from what I can tell, he's at least up there as one of the uh, one of the greats. So. Um, he and all of his Studio Ghibli films have, how long has he been doing it? When's the first one that he made? I want to say it was like the eighties or if not earlier. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's been a while. He's been doing, uh, let me look, we have Google. When was the first Studio Ghibli movie? 86 with, uh, oh. looks like it was Totoro. My friend, to- or no, it was captured Castle in the Sky. Sorry. Castle in the Sky. I have seen that. I have not. It's good. This is actually on. Okay. Uh, yeah, I want to get to more Studio Ghibli movies because they're all on HBO and they're all same awesome. Anyway, um, voice acting cast. I don't know if you guys watch the sub or dub. I watch uh, the sub. I also watch the sub. Dub. Very good sub. Wow, you would. I watch the man. dub. Do you even like anime, Ty? Jeez. <laughs> Please. I have watched this infinitely more than you will. Probably. Um, so the subcast, uh, Rumi Hiragi is Shihiro, uh, Mayu Irona is Haku, and Mar- Mari Natsuki is Yubaba and Zaniba. I think I'll probably stop there as, like, those are, like, the main voice actors, I would say, and I don't know how many of the other ones we'd even recognize. Uh, I can't seem to find the sub or the dub cast uh i believe uh, chihiro is uh davy chase uh, davy chase there we go and you and yubaba and zaniba are played by suzanne plachette susan suzanne i'm not sure i'm suzanne. sorry suzanne i think it looks like a suzanne and then haku i'm not sure who plays him i don't have his voice actor it's, in front of me looks right like now. it's mayu irano I, irino is also haku oh wait no wait isn't I don't know. The, this IMDb does not separate these well. Regardless. Um, it's someone. Runtime. Yeah, it's someone. Runtime of two hours and five minutes. I don't think I said that the top and an IMDb rating of 8.6 out of 10. Is this higher than Inception? Inception is 8.5, isn't Inception's it? Inception's 8.8. Eight. Yeah. It is 8.8. Eight. Mother. Yeah, I think we're going to be hard pressed to get something above Inception. I'm not going to lie to you. What is the highest rated movie on IMDb? It used to be Shawshank. I, yeah, I think that was up there. It wasn't the Green. 
some shit like that. Yeah, Shawshank, Green Miles, Johnny Godfather, Johnny Dark Knight. Godfather, yeah. Shawshank, 9 2, Godfather, 9 2, Dark Knight, 9 0, Godfather, Part 2, 9 0, 12 Angry Men, 9 0, and then Schindler's List is 8 and 9. Those are the top six. Lord of the Rings, Return of the King is tied at 8 9. Hmm. And Fellowship is 8 8. But back to Spirited Away. Back to Spirited Away. Um, the IMDb summary reads as follows. During her family's move to the suburbs, a sullen 10-year-old girl wanders into a world ruled by gods, witches, and spirits, and where humans are changed into beasts. Okay. That just is the most, like, dumbed-down version ever. Also, <laughs> gods? I guess there are kind of gods. I mean, you've got the river god, right? Yeah. Is that a thing? Yeah. I guess, so I guess that's not incorrect. I, I just, that doesn't... Yeah, she's in this world i don't know yeah whatever decent sort of ish imdb summary um but i'll fill in the gaps here yeah we so we have chihiro our our main protagonist uh she's i don't know if they give her uh, 10 years old is that officially how old she is or is that what just the imdb summary is lying to me about i believe that's uh anyway. imdb summary but yeah okay she's young around 10 i would say it seems about right um and so she, like Stated she's kind of moving um, to the suburbs. They get lost on their way, her and her parents. Um, kind of decide to, her parents decide to wander into um, an abandoned building that they don't know is what is going on. They just think it'd be fun to explore. Long story short, she finds herself in this uh, dream world, essentially, um, with, as we stated before, gods, witches, and spirits. Um, but she's obviously not supposed to be there, and it's kind of her travels of trying to get out, trying to rescue uh, her parents and whatnot, and all that in between. There's a much deeper meaning to this movie, um, which I think I'll save to spoilers. Uh, I don't want to say too much. But there's a decent chance you've seen this. I feel like of all anime movies, like this is like one most people point to, like the default kind of like, Oh, you like anime? Like, have you seen Spirit Away? Kind of thing. Yeah. Facts. Like, if there's a cult classic anime movie, this is it. Yeah, this definitely has um quite the quite the following for sure. Yeah. And uh, it's definitely one of those ones that uh, come up quite a bit. Yeah. Now, I think everyone here except for Blake has seen this before. I had not. Oh, you had. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. Uh, so then, Nathaniel, take it away. Ooh, you want me to go first? Yay, first time viewer. Um, yeah, I like this. I like it a lot. I mean, I, maybe that's reductive, but um, <laughs> yeah. What is there to say about like you know Studio Ghibli movies? They tend to um, start in a certain location with a certain certain set of characters, and you just follow the story as it unfolds. We see that again here um, with this one. Um, it's definitely like beautiful to look at obviously the animations next level um everything is could be a painting practically um in terms of the story i would say it took me a little bit longer than i was expecting to really sink into it a little bit um but i found when i did uh that's when i really kind of just got caught up and and uh drawn away with it uh, spirited away if you will um and um yeah definitely a big recommend from me and it looks like we are going through station identification. Um, so just pause, and the boys will be back here in a second. Um, but, yeah, I really enjoyed this movie overall. I'm going to be a big old recommend. Blake, since you're the other newbie, why don't you uh, take it from here? Yeah, um, this was my first time watching this. As kind of the fellas kind of mentioned here, uh, I'm definitely the least versed in anime. Um, so this is honestly outside of... What were the other two we watched? We watched what your name with you, with you and you. Your name? Okay, yeah. So this yeah. is only the third one of these movies I've watched. The other two ever this podcast. Yes. Huh. Okay. So um I kind of went in. I figured I'd like it though, right? Just kind of mm -hmm. off watch your name and weathering with you. And um I, I would say it pretty much met my expectations. I knew aesthetically and visually it was going to be very pleasing. Um yeah. Even despite the 2000, what's 2005, 2004 release date? 2000, 2001. 2001, yeah. So yeah, right? It's I, surprising I how old it is, man. Yeah, so I, I knew it was going to look good. And then I was watching, this looks 
as good as I thought it'd be. But then I remember like going back to look at the release date and I was like, oh man, this looks fucking phenomenal. phenomenal. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like when you put the time period on it. So yeah, uh, I mean, when was Lion King and whatnot? Those are in the 90s, but like not too ooh, far that's behind this, right? Yeah, I think Lion King was probably when I was born. And, like, 94, yeah, 95. yeah. And like those, of course, still hold up and they look good, but like they weren't doing what what yeah, this is, this is totally in 2001 this is this is insane for 2001 right for sure yeah. absolutely um yeah oh, over, overall I, I i like it i like the story um i like the main character i mean it, it, to nathaniel's point though it did kind of take me a minute to kind of buy into the story mm-hmm. quote unquote yeah. um but i i knew it just obviously it was going to be it was going to be there for children as well as an adult audience right so i knew i was going to be able to be captivated by it eventually um I, I would recommend it. Uh yeah. Adam. Or go, this go ahead, is, yeah, yeah, I was just gonna I was gonna pick up. Um but this is uh my second time watching it. First time being not too long ago, like less than a year and a half ago, about two years ago maybe. Um I enjoyed it honestly much more the second time. Um because I remember it was like you guys said, like it it it, it doesn't it's not quite what you're expecting if you haven't seen a movie like this before. Um, and like now that I have seen this kind of Studio Ghibli stuff and I've seen clips and, and little bits from other Studio Ghibli stuff, I realize like that's kind of what you're getting out of these. Um, but it's uh, much more, ex- once I've already kind of accepted everything on the second time watching it, it was much more enjoyable to just kind of like be all in from the beginning. Um, and uh, I should also say I went to the Regal um, in town here and Fathom Events was putting on. I think you guys had access to it actually at AMC, um, but they were putting on a screening of this for their Studio Ghibli Fest that they've been doing for like the past six months. They've shown six or seven Studio Ghibli films and this was sure. like kind of rounding it out. Um, so I was able to see this in theaters, which is awesome. Um, very glad I was able to do that. But, uh, and it looked incredible. It does... The only thing that was like catching me a little bit on the age was like the frame rate of the animation. You could just it just looked much choppier on a bigger bigger screen. Um, as far as like, I could just kind of see you know the frame rate go by a little bit more than I would usually. Um, and it didn't take me out of it by any means. But I was like, this looks incredible except for that bit. Um, it didn't look in that regard particularly great. But besides that, I really enjoyed it, and it was nice seeing it on a big screen. Uh, but yeah, this this story is awesome. It's it's so nice to see like a, a kids film like this that like you said, it's got that Pixar quality where like it's got a great story. It's good for kids and adults can enjoy it as well. And um, it's it's nice seeing. It's just cool seeing like a different culture's take on that kind of kid story. You know, like they're not. It's not like a Pixar film or Disney film in that sense. Um, it's just it's very different, but it doesn't feel too unfamiliar where it's not inviting to other people around the world obviously this um was japan's highest grossing film i believe until the demon slayer movie uh like last year so that's uh oh, wow. kind of a yeah. kind of a testament to this this is uh film's ability to kind of capture an audience it was one of those kind of phenomenal films that i, th- I think eventually got a theatrical release here i don't know if it did or not for sure actually. i'm pretty sure this is the one that it was either this or totoro that kicked off like disney distributing ghibli movies if i'm not mistaken uh, okay. but this was this was a, did receive a theatrical release in the states and was distributed by disney gotcha gotcha thank you um but yeah i am without a doubt i recommend it's um it's not a movie or not a typical kids movie not a typical anime movie it's kind of in a subset of its own in that regard but it's like still fantastic and um yeah i can't say enough good things about it it was just it's just a fun movie and um yeah i mean if you're willing to buy into a fun story like that and kind of just not take it gotta go in with the with the with like a kids movie kind of mentality where it's just doesn't have to be taken super seriously or anything like that um you're gonna love it so ty recommend um I think uh, a lot of things that this uh, gets praised for is the animation. Uh, even uh, after watching it this last time, it's still, uh, it still amazes me how good it is. Obviously, I'm sure there's been some sort of uh, remastering going on because that's obviously a little easier to do with uh, animated stuff than it is with uh, live action. But um, even the, um, the like subtle hints in the animation, not necessarily how it looks, but the things that they do to... Um, 
show you how certain people um, feel mm. um, is, uh, is, is something that they do uh, particularly well in this. Uh, stories written really well. Um, it's, it's very well paced, in my opinion. Um, it is two hours or just above two hours. I think it's like 205 or something like that. But um, yeah. it definitely doesn't feel like it. Um, it uh, it's, it's drawn out pretty well. And um, there's there's some uh, pretty cool um, uh, undertone themes here for sure, um, with uh, you know just the the basic human instincts and and uh, you know how how gluttonous we can be and, and things like that and um, but um, yeah it's 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 really good I thoroughly enjoy myself every time I get to kind of sit down and and watch a Studio Ghibli but uh, Spirited Away is definitely one of those more. Uh, renowned ones for sure and uh it's something that uh i will probably have you know like my my child watch and it'll be something that we can you know sit down someday and, and do stuff like that but yeah it's definitely a recommend for me for sure when uh when was the first time you watched this tie do you remember man this came out in 2001 Ooh, i was what 11 no how old was i yeah 11 right yeah, that tracks yeah. And uh so I probably I probably watched this when I was like fourteen, fifteen. Okay. So and I have I've watched it countless times since. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Uh so that's a recommend all around. Do we have anything else we want to say pre spoiler talk? I'll take that as a no, so let's get into it. Uh if you have <laughs> not seen Spirited Away and did not want it spoiled for you. We'll go ahead and check. Uh, go ahead and check the episode description. I've left a timestamp. You can jump to where you'll be taken to the ranking of the movie. Hop upon the entropy list. Hop upon. Spoiler time. Shit goes down. Shit goes down. So basically, I feel like I've had this movie like in a nightmare before. You know, mm-hmm. <laughs> like like it, this movie is very dreamlike, but sometimes it gets to a point where like this is a nightmare <laughs> like like a foreign place i lost my parents and of strange creatures and i gotta work like i don't know what's going on yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah it's definitely weird when you um you kind of get into that bit you you kind of feel like in the beginning this might go a little more of like the the horror route because you do lose your parents and she goes back and they're giant pigs just uh maxing out on food and and then next thing you know it she's kind of running around it's like you got to get a job kid it's like wait what (laughs) so definitely for a first time view it's definitely uh, one of those things where it's uh it's very like oh okay so that i i didn't think it was gonna go that way but it's cool that uh that it definitely does uh let that that kind of pick the story up in in the first time you're watching it yeah, yeah, I thought it was interesting, like, because obviously this movie has quite large cultural significance, and, like, you do see, you know, merch from this or people in the no-face masks or anything like that. And being kind of a first-time viewer, I kept waiting for, like, the villain to show up and kind of thing and, like, the story to kick off yeah, in that sure. way. And it, yeah. it, it really does, not it does a good job of obviously, like, kind of humanizing the quote-unquote villains a little bit more so you, you understand why they're doing it and it makes a you know compelling argument for at least children of like yeah the things that are going to be forming obstacles in your life don't always come from you know a crazy person in a castle they're just other people around you and and you're going to run into things that you don't agree on yeah and uh yeah. you got to overcome it as they come basically yeah it's um yeah, what were you guys' initial thoughts when when um, Blake and Nathaniel were when it's like she comes back and her parents are pigs? Like, what are you you guys are like? What the hell is going on? Or what were your what were you guys' takeaways there? Were you guys <sighs> expecting something like that at that point in the movie? Uh, no, honestly, I didn't really know. I expect that I was just kind of just like buckled in for a ride. You know what yeah. I mean? Um, I think Nathaniel kind of hit it on the head in terms of kind of waiting to see like when a villain or like a or, or can I, I guess, uh, antagonist, An antagonist kind of show up, yeah. right? But sure. you don't see one kind of for the most part. So it was, it was interesting. I guess that kind of diverted my expectations. But um, I do like the story they kind of went on to tell, and even just like the character growth of um, is right. it, how do you pronounce it? Is it 
Chihiro? Chihiro. 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 Yeah. Yeah. So even like the character growth that that protagonist goes through, I mean, I, it just kind of says a lot. And it's a good story for children as well. To Nathaniel's point, dude, you can kind of see that there are obstacles that aren't like scary monsters, you know, yeah. and like, and, and you have to overcome with like love, rather that be like a friendship love, a parent love, or, you know what I mean? So, um, yeah, I, I, I like it. I like it. Yeah. It definitely caters to um, the uh, the culture, um, you know, on that and that part of the earth quite a bit. Uh, when you're when you're younger, you are um, expected to uh, to grow up quite a bit faster. Um, yeah. You are tasked with more things. Uh, there's even a, it's actually quite an entertaining uh, Japanese uh, show, but uh, it's it's a guy who uh, literally it's a TV production that literally follows. Uh, little kids around like throughout their day and they literally like walk themselves to and fro uh school uh they go grocery shopping for their parents because typically their parents are working kind of like all day and so like they do the grocery shopping and i'm talking like seven eight nine year old like kids oh they're um, like two so, like they're, they're like they're yeah. super young <laughs> they're very yeah. young yeah what is it old yeah. enough or whatever it's on netflix yeah. it's a wild show <laughs> Yeah, so uh, you you are expected to grow up quite a bit in that culture. So um, it's um, especially at a younger age. So seeing her get a job and stuff like that, it's it's definitely um something that you can kind of replicate in in that culture, um, which is pretty cool to to kind of see that stuff. Yeah. Thoughts? <laughs> no, don't everyone <laughs> speak at once. I was waiting for someone to pick that up. But, yeah, uh, I, I mean. It's one of those stories where, like, if you, and I guess, like, maybe I see this as a good way, in a good way, too. Like, it's one of those stories where, like, if you were to say, well, someone says, what's the plot of Spirited Away? You'd be like, all right, so first, this happens. And then, like, you can't really summarize it down in any ways. You kind of yeah. have to go episodically throughout the whole thing. Yeah, we, we cover some ground. Minutes. Yeah. It covers a lot of ground. That's which is like earlier when I was saying like it took me until like the spirit guardian uh, or like the the bit the river guardian bit where she like uh, yeah. clears the the gunk out of him from there to like mm. really mm -hmm. feel like I was like falling into the movie a little bit. Like even then sure. afterwards sure. I was like wow I was that was thirty five minutes into the movie it it doesn't <laughs> it feels way longer narratively in uh, than its two hour runtime I feel like yeah. Yeah, they definitely do a lot, um, and uh, it's it's cool because everything kind of um, progresses. It's you never really feel it's like you're nat you're kind it's of very natural sitting stagnantly in anything, which is pretty cool. Yeah, um, but it doesn't uh, feel rushed in any part either. It's just no, like, not at all. All the all the events of the film are pretty sequential and they make sense and whatnot. Yeah, and um, going back to the uh, the the stink spirit uh or that's what they originally right, think yeah, it is yeah. um that's actually one of my favorite parts as far as uh the animation that i was referring to earlier mm -hmm. on, on how it makes you feel you see kind of the the waves go up her body when she smells him for the first time and you're that's mm -hmm. exactly how that would feel you you would, you would get like those goosebumps and that chill because yeah. that the smell is so bad um so that that's like one of those cool things that um is so small but it it makes you as a viewer immediately feel that <laughs> same emotion come over you. I had that same feeling, and you actually jogged my memory when you were talking about it earlier. When she uh, she steps on the like the curse spell from the other mm -hmm. witch's seal or whatever, and it, you see her foot oh, it, like makes crush like it. Squirt. Yeah, and she just like you see her mouth open, and you're just like, yes, I know exactly that that moment that you're feeling right now. Of oh god, I've stepped on something. It's super gross. And I don't want to look at it, but I need to know what it is, too, kind of thing. Yeah. Well, even beyond that, it's just like in the beginning when she kind of gets lost, separated from her parents while they're eating. And then, like, she realizes, like, something's wrong. And then she's, like, running back in the panic when, when she, like, mm. can't find them and, and doesn't recognize them anymore. Like, I've, I've had, when I was a kid, there was a few times where I got separated from my parents in the panic when you are not with your parents when you're, like, below the age of, like, what, 10? Yeah, it's and crazy. Like you, and you get separated <laughs> from them, and then you're looking around, and, and like she does, and it's just like everyone's unrecognizable. I feel like sheer I don't panic. Know, like sheer panic. And like you kind of feel that, like 
you know, I mean, I, I feel like everyone's had that experience at least once, probably when they were a kid, unless your parents are got you up by a leash or something. Like everyone's kind of had that feeling, and like, well, it's that like, was, I mean, it even answers that in the story. That's why the big baby is a big baby because they doesn't he does Bo doesn't go outside, can't leave. Kind of thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, which is also very smart subtext. Um, there's, there's a lot of this movie. It's just, there's so much in it about, you know, just growing up kind of either too fast or, you know, like you said, it's, it's part of that culture for sure. But it, when you kind of relate it to our culture, it almost changes meaning a little bit, the whole movie, because at that age, you're, that is, that is kind of, this is the age where we're, you know, our culture kind of turns a little bit where you do become a little bit more independent around that age. Um, yeah. How old is the character in this? It's going to be like 10. We old. were debating that earlier. Yeah. About 10, 10 or, okay. Uh, yeah. 10 is what the IMDb yeah. summary says. Okay. Yeah, we don't I don't know if that's canon, but that seems about right. That, you know. So um but you know, it just watching this movie is just like, man, like we just grow up too too fast sometimes and like this movie kind of captures that way too well. Um where it's just we don't want to, but you know, it's going to happen one day whether we want to or not and like Obviously, I hope it's not with my parents getting turned into pigs and me getting lost in some, you know, spirit dimension. But, you know, it's going to happen. I don't know. I feel like that would be like a, at least a, a good divider line in my life. You know, life before true. the spirit dimension, life after the spirit dimension. That's I could really very, point very that out true. easily. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, it would change change you probably. It's cool, too, because uh, a lot of animes do um, elements typically uh, yeah. pretty well. And um, when uh, we're taking the train ride to um, the sister's house, uh, mm -hmm. Granny, you can see the, the train in the water and uh, even her like walking on it. But you can see like the grass under the water, yeah, yeah. kind of like as they're moving yeah. and stuff. And um, they do a, a very, very good job um, just kind of capturing that and um, the water and, you know, kind of the water, the, the sun reflecting off of it and and nightfall and everything like that. So that's all always one of my like kind of peaceful moments that you get in animes is when you kind of have like those very uh, scenic picturesque kind of uh, things that are captured. And uh, it's definitely something that puts me in more of a, a calming mood for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. The water looks great. One of the other things that um, I noticed while watching it this time is uh, when we watched weathering with you and your name one of the things i was bringing up was like how they kind of do a lot of like camera movement as if there's a camera being sure. filming in the animation and there are a few shots um particularly when she's trying to go down the stairs towards the beginning of the film uh towards kumanji's like little furnace area um and it, it's used one other one or two other times but they do the um vertigo effect where you like on a camera, if you move towards or away a subject and you zoom in or out, it will give you that kind of flattening of the image. Um, it's a where trolley it shot. looks like the background, yeah, where the right, where the yeah. subject is in the same spot, but the background is getting either closer or further yeah, away. You, um, and it's used. What'd you say? Well, you you achieve it by pulling the camera back physically on a trolley while uh, simultaneously zooming in on the Correct. lens yes. itself so you have yeah. the camera moving in two different directions in essence and it gives you that really strange whoop feeling mm -hmm. yeah. overall visually yeah and it's used quite a bit um in film if you look for it but um they like had shots like that where like the background was like flattening in on the subject and like while it's not you know crazy by today's standards like i was like 2001 they were doing this shit like your name just came out last year, or like three years ago, and like that's blowing me away. But this is 2001, and you're doing the vertigo effect in animation. Like, oh my god, insane! Just, just insane. Yeah, it's one of those films that breaks the mold of like, well, is this a children's movie or is this cinema kind of thing? You know, mm -hmm. if you want to get, yeah, it, yeah. if you want to get all highfalutin about it, and it just goes to show you can make any story and compelling and engaging for any age range Body. as long as you tell a good story you know facts i agree yeah should we see and where it ranks uh, one of the last things i want to touch on too is uh it's cool because uh you walk into kind of this uh abandoned uh city um in the beginning and that is actually something that is very real in japan 
there are tons of like full blown abandoned cities and like townships. Um, I believe they call Decimated them like by districts. Um, <laughs> um, and uh, it's it's cool because it's it's literally like a ghost town. It's it's a spirit town, and uh, nobody lives there. Uh, you can basically walk onto them, and they're overgrown with vegetation and it's just it's very eerie to kind of walk into one of them and uh it's pretty wild because if you being someone who's not from japan they will actually give you one of these homes but you have to put money into it to re to basically revamp it into something that you can live in but if you ever wanted to like move to Japan, you could actually get a house from the government for free, but you have to promise to put a certain amount of money back into it to reestablish it that you can live in it. But it's really cool. It's very eerie um, to, to kind of see these basically spirited towns uh, in Japan. But uh, that's like a, a fun little tidbit that I always uh, find that's very cool that a lot of people don't really realize that that's like basically a real thing. Yeah, I didn't know that. That's dope. Makes, makes more sense. Yeah. Also, like, the worst parents ever. Right? <laughs> yeah, just like, assholes. She, like, she clearly didn't want to get out of the car. She didn't want to go down the tunnel. She didn't want to do anything. And it's just... Ugh. I did like how they were like, oh, yeah, the house is right up there. It's on the end of the street. And they're just like, nah, fuck it. Keep going. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The movers can do it. Yeah, it'll be fine. Go. We'll keep going. Oh, and then it's yeah. blocked by this weird, mysterious thing. Well, we'll, we'll keep going through there, too. <laughs> oh, yeah. this food! No one else is here, but there's a ho- huge buffet. That makes a lot of sense. Listen, you got to set up the story somehow. Yeah, he's got cash and he's got cards. You know, he. He's- I got cash. <laughs> I got cards. <laughs> Fucking love that line. Uh, um, what was one other thing? Oh yeah, I just there's another part of this movie where it's just like a lot of this feels like it could be like her imagination in some respects, um, mm. where it's just like, you know, uh, it's, it seems like they kind of build Haku as like, you know, her best friend who she hasn't really thought of or seen in a while. And I, I just, that kind of thought loves, I just love how that kind of would tie into the whole concept of like growing up where it's like, remember, remember having imaginary friends and like these imaginary worlds where, you know, if you found like a ghost town like that, like, of course I'm going to imagine like, you know, weird people living there or whatnot. And I'm not saying this like movie takes place in her imagination. Um, that's hereditary, but, um, you know but this movie i feel like that's um kind of a, a definitely part of the aesthetic that they go for at least and i feel like they tied in the story where it's like like i said haku seems like you know was her long last imaginary friend kumanji is somehow her grandpa it's just like okay that makes sense in some respects or or like if you were to go when you were a kid to like your grandma's house or your parents house or, or grandparents house um like you would probably be pretty bored and it'd probably look a lot like yubaba's uh you know uh, room or tapestries and whatnot um and I, I there's i think a part of that in this film i don't know if i'm reading into it too much but to me like i watch that and i go oh this is like not in her imagination per se but supposed to kind of take place in her own ima- like what her imaginary world would look sure. like and yeah yeah i think that makes I sense like that part a lot too yeah yeah for sure anything else any big takeaways are we are we haku stands do we love haku I love Haku. I think he's dope. Yeah, I think Haku is cool. I think um, one uh, character that we haven't really uh, touched on yet that is a, a very uh, pinnacle uh, part of the story and uh, somebody that has very also uh, become quite the icon uh, in uh, Japanese culture, and that's No Face. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, who I always thought of, I always, I guess I just assumed, I thought they were like the villain of the whole thing. And like, we're like, when they started eating people, I was like, oh, okay. So we're like moving into the final <laughs> act here. And then I was like, wait a second, this is spinning away yet again. But I liked where they went with it and everything. It just, and I was just like, yeah, yeah man. All right, cool. Yeah. yeah it's, it's no, he's just lonely, anyone. dude. He's just lonely. He's got no face, yeah. no friends. So yeah, it's a lot of Tyler cold. and Nathaniel's point on that. I mean, this was, like I said, kind of going into that uh kind of i i guess like blank right or as an open slate that was one thing when no face kind of popped up on the screen i was like okay i've seen that before yeah right that was like the lone thing that i could say is like i know what this is a hundred percent whether that's just like pop culture or whether it's just internet right i couldn't tell you but that was the lone thing i did some knowledge of prior 
to the yeah. film. No face yeah. would be a cool tattoo. No face is cool. It's uh it's again one of those things that's a uh, very um uh built very deep into the the Japanese culture. Most spirits are um considered to be uh relatively good spirits in the Japanese culture. Um, but you are still not supposed to like invite them into your home um, and, and things like that, because things like that can uh, go awry or like if a family thinks that like they're cursed or like have bad luck, um, a lot of them will blame it on like a family member that may have invited like a spirit into the home and uh, things like that can happen. So um, just another like little tidbit of things that are kind of um, that are very uh, built into the the Japanese culture, which is which is pretty cool. Definitely, what a great movie! I love it, man. It's definitely one of those ones for me yeah. that's uh, um, it's been around for a while, and uh, it's it's not one of those ones that you know I'll I'll like go and rave a lot about, but it's one of those ones that definitely makes me uh, it, it's got me very interested in the the Japanese culture. Uh, as a young kid and uh, something that uh, that I will always have a, a great appreciation for, for sure. Yeah, I genuinely do wish I had seen this movie growing up as well, too, you know. Me too. I think it would have gave me nightmares, but I'm glad I got to eventually. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying, man, she's she's a witch and a bird. Like, how does that work? Classic bird witch. Classic bird witch. All right. Well, welcome back, listeners, who skipped over the spoiler segment of the podcast. We're going to go ahead and rank Spirited Away up upon the Entropy List. For those of you who do not know, the Entropy List is back with Banter's official list of every movie we have reviewed, regardless of genre, regardless of anything else, all in one fantastic list. This is essentially how we rate our movies, right? Then do it out of five stars, out of ten, whatever it is. We throw up all the movies we review on a list and see how they compare to one another. If you'd like to reference the Entropy List, for yourself, you can do so by checking that episode description where it is linked to my letterbox. Hmm. All right, Spirited Away. Episode or entry 123 on the entropy list. Getting up there. Getting up there. Um, does anyone have any early, early slots they want to go for i mean biggest thing we can compare to is like weathering with you and your name weathering with you currently sitting at 50 which is quite a ways down and your name sitting at 12 which is low as well should be higher um but those are the other two anime films we have we of course have like frozen and frozen 2 which are somewhere in the 50s or 60s i believe where are they frozen 2 is 55 and frozen is I thought they were closer. Oh, Frozen 65. How do they get so far apart? <laughs> Things happen. Things do happen. Shit um, went down. Shit. Shit did go down. Oh, uh, man. This is a tough one. It's so... Yeah, who's, who's letting it rip first? Yeah, it's just so different than anything else we have on here, even the other anime movies. Hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah, I feel stumped on this one as well too. Because like, yeah, this I, one's a little hard. Well, I don't think it's gonna be your name, so I don't have it at twelve or above. I yeah, I don't have it that high. And I think I like it better than Weathering with You, so I'm gonna have it in between those two. So that that takes out a long chunk of our list, right? That's that's a good start. You know, that is a great start. And I don't expect anybody to be like uber high on this. It is a really, really good film, but um, I think this is one of those ones where you you have a magic spot for an age um, to where you can really get into this. And um, I am one of the I'm I'm the only one that kind of uh, caught that age. So right, for sure, twenty one isn't a good age to see this at. It, I think it's good no matter what, but I think there's a a point where it's it gets from a it goes from a a, a a movie or a film to something that's very uh magical in a in a child's mind agreed agreed i'm just, I'm just i know you're playing devil's advocate i get yeah, it. i'm gonna put this <laughs> at 37 holy shit that's probably around where i'm at too nice 
right below seven. Scream, right above Boys in the Hood. Yeah, I know Blake can't put it above Scream. That's going to be one that he can't <laughs> do. I don't think Blake would want to put a... I, well, you, yeah, Boys in the Hood was your recommendation ri- originally, right, Blake? Yeah. That's with that. Correct. Um, so yeah, I just, I can't put it above screen, but that's like the first one before where I'm like, okay, this is, this starts the really good section, you know? Um, and I think, yeah, I think just like as a movie, something that I will watch again, um, you know, like immediately afterwards, like Boys in the Hood, I'm, I'm going to, I'll watch again, but I need to like sit with it for a while. In terms of like rewatchability, I could like, you could throw this movie on in the background tomorrow and I'd be all right with it. So, um, yeah. I'm going to put it there, 37. I'm going to be a little higher because I know that there are quite a few movies in between your 37 and where I'm going to put it at that I would definitely put this on before, um, I would put them on. Um, but, uh, and I think uh, some things like um, Spider Man um, are up here pretty high. Um, but um, yeah, you know, Boys in the Hood is is pretty hard because that's um, that's again something I saw at a, a relatively young age and um, something that really really stuck with me. But then I see things like Spider Man and Ichimama Tambien and Judas and the Black Messiah, good but not like crazy. And then you hit like Starship Troopers, which I think is a hard cap for me. So. Um, I'm just going to put it right under that. I'm going I'm to go a little bit higher. I'm going to be at 24. 24. Yeah. I like that number. Fair, fair, yeah. That's, it's also really hard to put this above Kill Bill. It is. Kill Bill is killing it. And Training Day is actually what's really killing Yeah, it. but there's so many. There's like between even between 24 and 29, there's so many movies that I would put this on before, like Requiem. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm also so, at, I'm also at 24. Yeah, um, Kill, Kill Bill and Training Day need to be where this in the sign and Spider Man is. Facts. Yeah, yeah, probably. We'll re maybe we'll reevaluate at some point. We're gonna keep saying that, folks, but it's never gonna happen. The yeah. list, the list. That'll be the uh, that'll be the last <laughs> episode of Backrow Banter. <laughs> we sucked at this, guys. I can't believe you listened. Here's actually how this list goes. I think that's the perfect way to end the pod. I think it would be. That's funny. Final pod is correcting our mistakes for however many yeah. episodes we get to. Oh, that'd be funny. Um, right, I'm at 24 so, oh. as well with Ty. For pretty much the same reason. Okay, so yeah, I'm 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 certainly not as high as Ty and Adam. Um, I think I was leaning toward. I think I'm lower than all of you, but I think that's just because this isn't really up my alley. Um, but I do like it more than weathering with you. And so I, I think where I'm going to put this thing. I like it more than Tokyo Drift, like more than Dr. Sleep, like more than Coherence. Bullet Train is kind of like tough in terms of what would I just put on if I wanted something to watch. Sure. But then I see like Pig at 43, which I wasn't drastically big on that. And then there's like the Cheng chi and Dr. Strange, which is how I, I can't get behind those. I think I'm going to do 43. I'm going to put it behind Kill 43. Bill 2. Okay. Below Pig. Yeah. Above That's pig. respectable. I thought you might have gone or, ab- above Above Pig. Uh, below above Kill pig. Bill Biden 2. Okay. Yeah. Honestly, I was close to putting it. It's just that I like it more than Weathering With You, but I didn't want to put it above Paid and Fool. I love Paid and Fool. Yeah. So, but I do like this more than Weathering With You. I'll just stick with that. Cool. Cool. Well, that gives us an average rating of 32 on the entropy list. It, a flat 32, which I, we, typically means we don't have to tie break unless that's someone just, has an argument of yeah. I'm of fine with what, that. What is what is in that spot? I think it's Blackhawk like down. Blackhawk down. I would put this above Blackhawk down. Personally. Yeah, I'm probably that. that. Cool. Mm. Cool. 32. It is. Spirited Away at 32 below The Northman, which was like the one film I was like, I'd, this is way better. <laughs> the Northman, <laughs> Northman might be a little high. Yeah, oh, well. I kind of uh, agree. 
Yeah, it, not, not it's terribly not, high. It's not I don't in think the top it's like tier of things down. I need to change, though. Correct. It's definitely not. No, it's not yeah. that far away from where it should be. Regardless, Spirited Away slotted in at 32. Good rating. I think that's a good spot for it. We'll see how that ages, of course. Our next review, though, is a bit of a makeup. We skipped over it in the month of October, and we have a free week next week, so we're like, let's get to it. Uh, we're watching American Psycho, which is currently still streaming on HBO Max, so you should have access to it if you have uh, an HBO Max subscription. If you don't, what are you doing? HBO Max is the best streaming service by far. Get on that. Um, do yourself a favor. But yeah, that'll be our review for next week, American Psycho. Nathaniel, do we have a five-star review? Uh, we do have a five-star review. If you want to hear your five-star review read out on the podcast, you can give us five stars on Apple Podcasts. It's that simple. And we will read out whatever you say. Just don't be evil. Um, but you could be nice, like this person who said five stars. Love it. This is from user 738528 So hopefully that's not someone's phone number. But uh, wonderful podcast. <laughs> Great spot to find, new stuff to watch. Really go in-depth with what they're talking about. We certainly do go in-depth, and that's just for you with our casual banter. But if you want to hear your podcast or your uh, review read out just like user bunch of numbers there, um, you can review us, and it'll happen. So that, Adam, take us home. Well, uh, yeah, you can leave us five-star review if you haven't already. Uh, and then you can also share the podcast, share with a friend, a family member, a spirit, an imaginary friend. There's a lot of things you can share with uh, that relate to this film. So you choose which one works best for you and go and do that. You can follow the show as well on Twitter at Banter Row, on Instagram at Backrow Banter Pod. Our YouTube is just Backrow Banter. And our email for any questions, comments, concerns, grievances, anything of that sort is Backrow Banter Pod at gmail.com. Blake Holder, where can yo, yo. people find you at, my man? Um, <clears throat> Letterbox, the Blake Holder. I'll be on there logging some things every once in a while. I'll put down my thoughts on a review. Um, may end up getting Call of Duty. We'll see. We'll see. I don't want to put that in my <laughs> so, uh, I mean, PlayStation or Xbox. I was not expecting um, that to be uh, part of the that's, outro. That that's Mr. Water Coolers on on either of those. So yeah, we'll see. Maybe if I get that, I'll I'll um I'll put something up there, and we might have to we might have to get the boys online and. And run a, a few BRB games, so. COD stream? Who? Oh, yeah. I could be convinced. Papa Schwartz, want to donate seventy dollars? <laughs> uh, yeah. So that's that's what you got for me. We'll popcorn it over to. We'll go to Ty. Twitch TV forward slash El Trabajo eighty seven. Twitter, Letterbox, and Instagram. Is it Instagram? Do I say it? No. Twitter. Yeah. yeah. yeah? All right. Whatever. Yeah. Fuck it. Tyler Vidalis, come find me. We'll hang out and uh just a couple of shout outs for uh two new listeners that uh i know have uh stated to me that they have uh been listening and, and been doing it relatively religiously um one is going to be one of my little sisters one of four um and that is abby so thank you abby for listening she said that one of the first ones she listened to was the lord of the rings one because she is also oh, right. a lotard uh, a lotar nerd that sounds um, so offensive <laughs> you say that I uh, I, that's, well, that's that? why I switched it. It was it was a uh, low tar. I was going to get this taken down. <laughs> I was about to say, dude, I, yeah, I got to <laughs> mark that timestamp. <laughs> yeah, so I think uh, that I, out. I think low tad is a Pokemon though, so maybe that's what we were going. It for is. Me. There is. Yeah. You know what? It's a, yeah, a low, low, low tar nerd. Um, and then uh, the other one is a he's a he's a new former employee. He li I literally he was like under me for like. Uh, a month and then he uh transferred stores and uh his name's geo so um shout out geo thanks for listening uh but you're a piece of shit for moving stores <laughs> shout out geo <laughs> uh who else needs to go adam yeah uh you can find me on twitter at h24 on twitch at twitch.tv slash h and on letterboxd i got the h tag on that one a y y s h uh, Nathaniel, have you gone yet? Nope. You can find me on Letterboxd and Twitter at NS Gingrich. You can find me on Instagram at NathanielG92. Other podcasts, Sandpiper Tapes. See you later, folks. That's it for episode 124 of Back Row Banter. 24, a very special number for me. That's a, a baseball number. There you go. Hey. Gotta love it. Yeah, lucky number. Uh, anyway, uh, that's it. 
for and Kobe's Sergio. number. Rest in peace, Kobe. And Kobe's number. Rest in peace. One of us had a really good time wearing one. Twenty four was considered better. I don't know which one it is, but um, Where- anyway. <laughs> and you can <laughs> thank you all for listening, especially if you made it this far into the episode. Uh, I really do appreciate it more than you know. Uh, join us next week for our review of American Psycho, and we'll be RB. Be excellent to each other, everyone, and we will be RB. Thanks for stopping by and uh, pass us along. We appreciate growing and we appreciate you and uh, just spread love and we will be RB. Um, thanks for listening. Thanks for the support as always. We wouldn't be able to continue this podcast if uh, we didn't have a group of people listening. So we greatly appreciate it. Um, as long as you're at least doing one thing you love every day, then I'd say you're going on with life the correct way. So we'll be RB. Blake, have you watched any baseball yet? Uh, I watched a little bit of the game on Friday. Okay, so I think that, that was... game one? Uh, game two? Uh, uh, would have been game, game two. Game one. I think it was game was two. Because yeah, I think you and I talked two. about the game before, and I was like, did you watch last night? You were like, nah. And I was like, it was a crazy game. And then I think you probably watched that night. Oh, was that game Okay, one? so then, yeah, that must, that must be nothing. game two then. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, they, I was watching that game. I was like, oh my god, 5 nothing in the fucking like, fourth inning. This game's over. Right. Like, How do you come back? And then one inning later, or like three innings later. I was Phillies like, are oh, feeling okay, like the team, man. Yeah. Yeah, dude. The, the, Bru- or the, or the, the, the Phillies are just... They'll just pile it on. They got a crazy Please. offense. Do you guys think insane. the Phillies take it? They're just producing. I honestly... It's... I don't think the Astros are like gonna just roll over, but it's sure. hard to. I mean, Astros got to shut the door tonight. So freaking well, yeah. yeah, they really do. If they go down three one, I think it's over. Um, and but yeah, because even then um, they could go three two, but then they got to go back to Philly. Uh, if, no, they're going. Are they? They're in Philly right now for three games, right? Oh, is it backwards? I'm, it's, I'm sorry. It's two. It's two three two. Oh, so I thought it was, the, I thought it was two three two, but I thought the cities were reversed. No, no, because um, AL won the the All Star game again. Oh, so they're playing so, in Philly right now. Oh, fuck yeah, the they're Philly's in Philly might, right now. Philly's yeah, might roll so they it. have yeah, yeah, they have two more games in Philly, which is like they're gonna take one of them. Like I yeah. don't see them losing two games. So you're gonna oh, if they lose two either, games in Philly, they are dead. Yeah, yeah. So you either um, you win tonight or you pay, pretty much lose the series because I don't think you're gonna yeah come back three one. It's possible. Cubs did it. Are they but, rolling uh, out their start their number ones again on short rest, or is it? Are they going? Um, who's pitching? No. Who's pitching tonight? I can't tell who that is. Uh, Javier. For the Phillies, I, I have no idea who that is. For the no, for the Astros. Okay. Yeah, um, that's their starter. So I'm I'm assuming Verlander will go tomorrow, for uh, for uh, the game five. Oh, uh, Nola is pitching for Philly though. Oh, is he? Okay, yeah. so they they put him on short rest. Bryce Harper just stole a base. That's interesting. He's not very fast. Harper? He's pretty fast. Oh, I'm sure he is. But oh, are they playing right now? Yeah. Yeah, they are. Yeah, I got the game um, on the background. It's not on ESPN. Um, Fox. It's on Fox. Mm. How do you feel, Nathaniel, about their their um, I don't even know what you call that their score thing in the bottom right, their new one? Oh, the box score. I I yeah, I don't score. I don't have the uh, the games. Oh, okay. Yeah, I haven't been able to actually watch it yet. It's the one with like the three dimensional base base path. You know what oh. I'm talking about? Oh, oh, um, that's all right. Whatever. I like everything besides the the base path thing. Yeah. I think that looks dumb. The one like, that was the most make that two dimensional. The one that everything was... else about it's good. I think the one that was like the most different for me was the Apple one. If you ever saw any of yeah, the Apple Apple's, TV ones, yeah, where they like express things as like percentages rather than the normal baseball numbers. So mm. it would be like, oh, he gets on base 
forty percent of the time rather than like oh, he's got a four hundred on base percentage or something. Four hundred, like yeah, which is makes more sense to people who aren't used to watching baseball. Right. But. Yeah, you just breaking it down that way made sense to me because one of the drawbacks, like when I watch baseball, very seldomly though, like I don't understand any of the st- the statistics behind it. Sure, and there's right? so when many they say statistics. Like, that's, yeah, <laughs> I don't know what it means. You know, yeah, I mean? even I don't know all of them. Oh no, um, I don't know all of them either. No, absolutely not. Yeah, it's just not. hard. That part of the game's come on so like, far and so fast, even since I played. Like, fuck, man. Yeah. Yeah, there are a lot of new metrics. All right, y'all ready to kick it off? I am. Starting the movie. Let's get her going. G Kids. I just wanted to be known. I was in Philly to watch the Cubs take at least one game of their. I think they swept the Phillies at home, Philadelphia, over the summer. So if the Phillies win, Cubs are the 2022 World Series champions. I don't think that's how that works, but by default. Yep, yeah, no, it's it is. It is. There are a lot of champions <laughs> then. There, there are. I think every team's a champion. <laughs> every team in the National League. They're out here trying to give them participation trophies. Hey man. Cubs fans need them. One championship wasn't enough. Squandered can you the imagine, dynasty. Can you imagine if there was ever a team in baseball that like went undefeated for a season? I no way. That's not even possible. I hate to I say do. things are impossible. That's got to be as close to impossible as right. most things in the realm of possibility. Right. I you, you, right like I don't know how that would. I think like you could probably pick any anything. team of all stars with any player set of players from history and mm-hmm. even have them try and run it, and there would still be some. One hundred and sixty-two games. Somehow. It's just too many. So like, it's just do, too do you many. guys know what the record is for most most wins in a season? You what, said they play one sixty-two. What is it? I can't imagine it being more than. I, I think know, it's like one ten. Yeah, I think didn't the didn't the Dodgers just do it? It was like one ten or something like that. One eleven was the Dodgers franchise record. One hundred and sixteen, okay. two thousand one Mariners. Oh yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. There you go. Okay. And then Close, they, and then yeah. they lost in the first round of the playoffs. So there you go. There's baseball. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, hey, the 1906 Cubs also won 116 games, but they didn't play. That would have been like 162. They I was played, gonna say they played. It would have been 152. That would have been like one of the ones that would have done it. Would have been like an old timey team that played like a shortened season or something of like 70 games yeah. and won them all or something. Yeah. 